There's a lot of debate as to whether or not having a cold plunge or cold dip or cold water therapy post-workout is beneficial or detrimental. Everybody's missing the best way to use a cold plunge, which is pre-workout. Yeah! Use your cold plunge before your workout and get the best, the best energy and performance you've ever had in your entire life. In fact, studies show that the production of catecholamines, all those feel-good chemicals like epinephrine, norepinephrine, dopamine, explode more so than if you took a pre-workout. So it's a pre-workout without the caffeine, without the stimulant. Cold plunge before you work out. That's the best way to do it. Invigorating. Yes. Not to mention now you uh, now you eliminate the the negative effects of what people on yes. the internet have been posing for the cold plunge, which is the uh, anti-inflammatory blunts the yeah blunts signal. the muscle building signal type of deal. right. And so that's been the big argument is you do this workout, you send the signal to build muscle, and you go get in this freezing cold water, and it blunts the signal to adapt and build muscle, and therefore it's you know uh, negligible at best or negative, and so you shouldn't do it. It's like. Well, I never cold plunged after workouts, anyways. Yeah. I remember um, you're the one. The, you're the first person to introduce this. Do you remember the I first can't time you tried this? Because it was actually Doctor Brink. It, yes, he told it was me to cryo. do it. It was cryo. Yeah. So mm -hmm. long before the the cold plunging, you know, uh, <laughs> sensation happened Crave. on the internet. Uh, cryotherapy hit the scene like I don't know, ten years ago or so, give or take. And our good friend, Dr. Brink, um, got one of those at his facility. And he's like, yeah, come try it. And so I had come down and try it and everything like that a few times. And he's like, you need to do it before you work out sometime and and watch how you feel. And I thought, really? I was like, before I work out? That sounds okay. So I did it. And I thought, oh, I had one of the best workouts I had. And I was like, holy crap, that's crazy. And it's exactly what you said. It feels it feels better than the best caffeine rush I've ever had in my life. Like, because... It's uh, as strong or stronger mm -hmm. without any sort of jitter side effects that you yep. get when you have too much no caffeine. crash and it's clean. It, it feels lasts. pure. It yeah. lasts uh, all day long. Yeah. And it's just to get the body that cold before you go and heat it up working out too. I feel like it, it, it lasts longer in the workout. Uh, it's just, I can't talk about how, I think it's so funny that people aren't doing it this way. That so many people do it post work. You know why I think people do it? But well, first off it's been used historically because back in a long time ago, you would see high level athletes doing, um, you know, kind of examples of, of this, like football players are these big garbage cans full of ice water and they jump in, but you know, they were doing double days and stuff like that yeah. to help recover. Yeah. It's and more that, recovery based. So I think it had to do with something like that, right? Like, Oh my God, uh, I'm in so much pain and I need to, you know, get this big anti-inflammatory um, type of response. And so that's, I, that's part of it. The other part of it, I think, is it's hard to get into a cold plunge. And I think when you're hot, it's easier to jump in. I'm hot and sweaty for my workout. Now I'll jump in. So mm -hmm. I think convincing people the beginning of the workout before they're hot to get in. But if you do it, it is, I mean, the, the, the data on, so catecholamines are these feel-good chemicals and hormones that you release. Epinephrine, norepinephrine, dopamine, you know, you can even put in that category. They're like these motivating uh, I think when you take caffeine or you take a stimulant, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for catecholamine-like effects or production. Cold plunge does this naturally. There is no down-regulation of receptors. There is no you know, uh, negative side effects that, like you get with caffeine. It just naturally, your body just ramps up, and then you go and you work out. And it's also great to start at a low inflammatory state and then get into an inflammatory state versus go inflammatory and then go anti-inflammatory. It's actually a better approach to start with the reverse mm -hmm. because uh you're going to be more effective in your workouts you're going to feel better in fact i this is one of the best ways to get off of pre-workouts you know a lot of people don't talk about the addictive properties of stimulants caffeine mm -hmm. is a very addictive substance and for anybody listening right now who's like no it's not maybe not yeah oh yeah well, how does it feel to think about waking up and not having coffee <laughs> like it makes people mad it literally makes people angry to think about that <laughs> yeah it's very I'm addictive right now. So it's one of the best ways to break that habit if you have this kind of pre-workout habit where you you can't get motivated to work out unless you have your pre-workout. Like you, you know, do thirty seconds a minute in a cold plunge, uh, and then jump out, dry off, go work out, dude. Yes. Mi minimal, like you can dunk your head in there, and you're gonna get yeah, uh, yes, uh, quite a substantial response. And I've actually applied this quite a few times before my workout. It was like. It was so refreshing and stimulating and, and, and 
again, like, yeah, the, the full move is to get all the way in, but by, I mean, at least that. By the way, you know, you talk about the jitters and stuff like that, right? Yeah. Stimulants can cause physical anxiety in people. Uh, we've all, we all know what that feels like, right? All of us have taken at one point too much caffeine <laughs> or, or too many stimulants. God knows I have, and it, it doesn't feel good, right? It's like you're wired, but you feel shaky. I can't exert match, maximal strength. I'm more out of breath. Just doesn't feel good. It's physical anxiety. Did you guys know, a lot of people don't know this, one of the ways, one of the natural ways to help when, when you have physical anxiety is cold water. Hmm. They'll say this. They'll say this. Oh, like if you feel lots of anxiety, splash your face with cold water. Is that you know, they recommend this to, to, for kids with tantrums yeah. or for adults with, with uh, regulation issues. So if you're an adult and you're having uh, emotional regulation issues, hmm. like, like, oh my God, I'm overwhelmed. I'm going to snap. To cold water. Happen, is it to but... break the... The, the mental the connection you have, yeah, like you're in this like mental loop of like fear, fear, scared, anxiety, anxiety part of it, and, and it's like the shock of the cold. Is that what it part is? Part of it. It's part of it. And, but you, you see this in movies too. How, what do they do in movies? They, smack, they slap their friend or they splash <laughs> yeah. cold water on the friend. Yeah. Like snap out of it. movies, everybody's yeah. slapping. Yeah, yeah. or cold water, splash it on your face type of deal. Yeah. So it's this uh, simultaneous waking you up, but also giving you calm energy, which is exactly what you want before you're about to uh, do something that requires high performance. I would even recommend something like this before a term paper or stuttering or, oh, or yeah. studying or a presentation. Um, and it doesn't have to be right before, by the way, the effects of a cold plunge mm -hmm. last for a couple hours at the very least. So you could do this at home because people might be like, there's no cold plunge. Well, it's almost the, the ultimate signal to get you to, to flood your system with these natural yeah. like chemicals uh, endogenously instead of ex ex exogenously. Yes. Right? You yeah. know, speaking of plunge, I've been meaning to actually have Doug pull this up the next time we had a commercial. I wanted to ask him to pull up the website because uh, I've been asked about the different models that they have. They've done a really good job, oh, too, of yeah, yeah. Their, uh, their offerings. They have so many different models now. It's crazy to have watched where they've come from, right? When we first met, they had the one unit was pretty much all they did. And they had just, I remember back, I don't know if you guys remember this, but I remember they didn't have more than like 50 of them on hand. That was oh, all they yeah. had. Oh, so yeah. So now look at all the different styles, cool. sizes, and options that they have. So let's start with Dude, the that, that one is the cool uh, at uh, Park City is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We all went in there. Everett went in there. Like Ethan didn't go in there, but I was actually surprised. So you see it was. all in the plunge. Party plunge. I didn't know they had a party plunge. Where now. you can jump oh. in with friends. Shut hey. up. Oh wow. An air, an air one, a pop up one. So the pop up one is the like the base model. Well, it's party. Inexpensive. I bet right? the air one is pretty cheap too. What's the? Does it have the prices on there? Doug? It does. It. Yeah, it's uh, two thousand for the party plunge, but the air is uh, forty two hundred, and then the pop up's only hundred fifty bucks. Yeah. So so the other wow. ones come with something that refrigerates the 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 water and and cleans it. The pop-up one, I think you just you fill it up yourself, but you can separately, if I'm not mistaken, well, that's buy the, the pro chiller right next to yeah, it. Yeah, you could buy something like that to to attach to it. Right, right. So that it cool it, it cools it down for you. Yeah. It's funny too because uh it is interesting, right? The, God, the fitness space is so funny with this. Yeah. Where they take something with value mm -hmm. and then they use it in the wrong way and they yeah. sell it the wrong way. And it's like it's right in front of your face. Like do this pre-workout. Don't worry about blunting any muscle building signal, okay? You're going to get a better workout. Your intensity is going to go up. You're probably going to be able to handle more volume and you're not going to, and you're going to get rid of the potential negative effects that come from stimulant use. You know, it, it, and I'll, I'll even say this. If you like your pre-workout, try half a dose and then do this. I wouldn't go full dose and then do this. It might be too much. Yeah. You know, nice yeah. combination of, uh, of the two of and, them. And also too, just the value of doing hard things, right. To have, having something mm -hmm. that you do that's difficult to do. I, there's something to be said about either starting your day off with it or doing it before a workout. Like as far as what it, what it does for it's you. It's a great discipline to add. hundred percent. So you know what the catecholamine production, by the way, that, that comes from plunge that, that like cold plunging, that some people uh, exhibit addictive. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they get addicted to I'm it. I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, if, they're feel good chemicals. If you make the argument that it rivals a pre workout energy drink that are extremely addictive, you know, obviously we know caffeine's addictive, but part of it is not so much just what the, the chemical itself inside your body, but the effect of it that oh, the, yeah. you see the addictive part. So I imagine that could be that way for sure. Yeah, for totally. People. Today's giveaway on YouTube is Maps Aesthetic. To enter to win, leave a comment below this video on the first 24 hours that we drop it, subscribe to this channel, and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comments section. We also have a sale on workout programs this month. 
MAPS Split is half off, and the Sexy Athlete Bundle of Programs is also half off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. All right, so uh, this, so we record, a lot of people don't know this. Well, I guess most people might know this. We record our episodes in advance, right? So we're going to talk about a recent event, but we'll see how well this airs, <laughs> know, you know, or I ages, I, I should say. Yeah. Because we're recording this, uh, what's today's date? Let's give them the date. so that July 15th. So it's July 15th, and crazy shit happened. Oh, yeah. Over the weekend. Oh, man. We had, we had to call each other just to I like called Justin. decompress. Oh, bro, I held it in for as long <laughs> oh, as I God. could. And oh, I got God. on the phone with Justin, and I'm like, bro, what is, what is I was at on? this, like, festival, and, and I was walking around, and, like, uh, I think it was Josh that kind of texted the group. And I'm like, and I didn't know to believe it or not, you know, that this assassination attempt happened. Because it was just, like, such so out of the blue and shocking. I What trips me out is... Uh, it's really not though when you think about it, right? I what? mean, I mean, when you think about like, like in terms of like the ramping I mean, up I, and the I know what you're saying, of the it, fact that it actually happened is what's crazy. That's where yes. when you talk about what you guys have been saying forever, okay, and what you guys have been, like, you, you know been, what though, I'm, talking, we didn't want, yeah, I'm I mean, gonna I didn't want this to. to get I mean, I, 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 I'll tell you right now, I've heard you both say multiple times in the last year that someone's gonna try and kill him. Yeah, sure. So yeah. it's not like it's that. Adam. The fact that you said it. You know what? <laughs> before, though? There's always. A, I guess it's just one of those things where it's like I said it, but, but there's Jesus, always a part of me. There's always a piece of me that wishes yeah. it's not true. Some of the stuff that I think. Exactly. So I think it's true, exactly. and then there's part of me that goes, I hope not. Yeah. yeah. Here's here's where I go with all of this it, it, because you know we're now uh, I don't know four years out from uh, the whole COVID situation. I think that was a very clear, very clear example of just how distorted, twisted, and fake uh, the yeah. the media is in particular um, and how they're being used by who knows what. Who knows who is who's using the media, but it's crazy. So that was really clear. And and as we've come out of that and look back, it's very easy it's to look back. Bought and, and paid for. It's very easy to look back now and go, the entire narrative was fake. They were lying to us about, propaganda. Ab about everything. And it, it was just bullshit. Um, and I don't believe anything they say. Then moving into this election, you know, and there's all this controversy around Trump and his felony charges and this and that. And you're kind of like, I don't know too much about it, but I'm like, God, it looks like they're, I mean, they're really hammering this guy. And I see them go after other people in media, like Elon Musk, you, they used to love him and then they hated him and yeah. all this other stuff. I'm like, this is wild, right? This is crazy. Then Biden does the debate. The media overnight <coughs> flips on him. The same people who said he was so he's so sharp and so great. All of a sudden he's terrible. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, what is going they on? They didn't here? see any signs the last few years. And then this thing happens with Trump and I don't, I mean, it's crazy. Like, like the, the, there, there were people pointing out that there was a guy on the roof for yeah. minutes before yeah. anybody else. How he got on there is insane. It's gotta be the worst secret service of all time. This is, it's just wild to me. It's I, I so follow, wild to me. I follow a couple people like uh, Tim Kennedy is an example. There's a couple other guys that I follow yeah. that are like ex sniper uh, military trained guys, right? And they were breaking down the whole like setup of it. And there's, oh, and I mean, obviously, when they do big rallies for like presidential yeah. candidates, so like that they think about these things. Yes, they, like, there's only certain vantage points that right. you even have accessible. They, they, they set it up in a. They in don't. A, they clear it weeks before. Yeah, they said they, they. It's obviously well thought out, and they and they put they position the potential candidate or the candidate in a position where they feel tactically they're or they're very much so in control of the situation, and they he broke down like the vantage point, like there was only like a way, like if you look at it, consider a, a pie as a possibility, there was only a, about a, a third of the pie that there was even opportunity for a shooter to exist. Yeah. And then of that third of the pie, more than half of it was field and openness that you could totally see. And there was literally only like two areas, just a, just a few roofs. Yes. That would be a potential legitimate shot. And the yeah. fact that we didn't have our own snipers, or, but our snipers are already pointing in that direction. And we didn't already have that area yeah, completely facing that way. cleared is so weird to me. It's so weird. It's, it's only weird if you, if you don't think that um, this was coordinated, planned, and that there's it's an inside job. Yeah. And I, I'm saying what everybody But the thinks amount about. of people that would need to be in on it, no, Sal. You don't, so, need, you don't need a lot of people. No. You don't. You need a few people. Yeah. You but need a few okay, people. Okay, a few of the right, very right people. Analyze it. It's like, okay, let's say you have an inside guy or gal. 
Okay, that inside because they have to be inside of the uh, Secret Service tail. Enough detail. of it. To enough of them. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. and then not only that, but they need to be the ones who just luckily got sectioned to that area. So you would have to know that here's my plant, my mole. They need to also be responsible yeah. for well, the area the that we're going to obviously can can structure that. What? I, who? What? The director of the Secret Service, like they'd be able to structure the team and, and who goes there. Okay, that's a good point. Because I'm thinking of like uh, it would have to go that high up then. Yeah, yeah because it couldn't be one of the actual. He's made a lot of enemies with the FBI. You know, while he was in, was firing and CIA, people. right? Yeah, but didn't he? He fired the CIA guy right yeah. away, right? Didn't he do that? Is that right? Yeah, I, I don't I right? know. I don't know. I, it, it's, Did he do? Did you guys? You guys are the fucking political people. Come on. Yeah, I don't know. You guys don't remember? Sure he fired a bunch of people. He was either the head of the CIA or head I, of I'm, FBI. I'm pretty one sure it was. Oh, it might have been FBI. You might be right. FBI. It was FBI. FBI. Is what it was. Yeah. My bad. So. Yeah, I mean, so the, there was already that contention there. And so it's like, it's, I don't know, it's not that far fetched to, to think that there could be an organized, uh, you know, staging of this from within. Yeah, it's it's so wild to me. It's so crazy that this stuff is happening and it's so obvious. And I mean, you go back to. So is it. A look, look, look at all the stuff that's happened recently. We had COVID, you had Epstein. Mm -hmm. no, does anybody believe the story around Epstein? No. They haven't released anything. Why? Probably because they have blackmail on a bunch of people they don't want to give up because they're still working with them. Yep. Then you have this flip, this weird like coverage of Biden, like he's not, doesn't have dementia, completely lying about it, and then a flip about it. And then this thing with now this assassination attempt with Trump. By the way, the, the, the some of these news outlets, what they're saying the day after. Like, and we'll see how how well it ages. Oh my but god! But some of it is just no, no. They're getting uh, it's they're wild. Getting dude. They're getting blasted for it. Justin, did you hear my uh, conspiracy theory? Okay, that I want to hear it. Okay. So I mean, since you guys have, have, have you know roped me into these, we didn't things have to. Now, it was. Yeah, didn't take, it was <laughs> it's, uh, if you're not here by now, dude, face. I don't know what. So, <laughs> it's right so in our face. One of the things Sal's been saying for a very long time, uh, or lead, I should say, a very long time for the last six to eight months, he's been saying like the the Dems are going to find an excuse to get rid of Biden, like and. Oh, yeah. You've noticed in the last when he did, the, they pushed the debate up early. Strange. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. but, but obviously, strategically, if you're thinking about getting rid of him, they put him out there in a debate where they know he's going to get destroyed. And then now all of a sudden, the all the TV networks have flipped. So so if this if so, his first yeah, the, the, the press conferences now, they're screening questions to challenge him. Right. OK, so if, they that, never did. if that conspiracy theory is right, that that's the direction you're going, then here's your next layer to this. This whole thing on Trump has nothing to do with Trump, and this was the setup actually killing Biden, and that and to blame it on a MAGA person. So this whole thing was set up that to get rid of Biden and to do, we can't just have him step out or what that because we've been, but if he gets assassinated, and the way he gets assassinated is we have we hire some twenty year old kid who can't shoot straight after to shoot at Trump, knowing he's probably going to miss. And if he doesn't miss, then we not. I think two, you're close. We kill two birds with one stone. No, I think you're close because this is what I think. Uh, Here's the deal. Here's why I, what you're saying is uh, wouldn't work. If you try to assassinate Trump and try to miss, all you're going to do is guarantee he's going to win the presidency. It was the next like, logical progression. You, you'll you'll guarantee. Like, like is what's happening right now. Trying to like, put federal charges on it. Like right now, he they, they missed. I, so and now he's going to for here's, sure here's where I jump in the polls. Here's where I disagree with that. Okay, because there's a lot of people that. Well, I'm not done. There's more. So, w what it could have been, based <laughs> off what you're saying, is assassinate Trump. He actually dies. Get him out of the way. Then go after Biden and blame him on MAGA. Now you've got two new people in there, and now you have a chance. Because missing Trump and now him surviving, there isn't a Democrat alive That's that would true. run against That's him. That's not true. If if Michelle Obama steps in, not right and, now, in replace of Biden, no way. Yeah, not right now. It's, Maybe it's, before. It, no, here. It doesn't need to be, Sal, they don't necessarily need to win. They just need to be believable enough yeah, that people screwed. will, if they, there's already, okay, there's already enough stuff that came out about the, the voter fraud stuff from the last one, right? There's already stuff that it came out that way. So if they have the ability, whether it's your argument 1% or 5% or whatever to, to, to mess with that, then it, all they need is it to be plausible. With Biden there, it's not plausible whatsoever. But if he's out the picture and you slide in a candidate, that's plausible. That's all we need. Doug, yeah, what do you think about that? I think there's a lot of speculation going on here. Oh, of course. Obviously. Of course. That's that I mean, I mean I, that's uh, what we're playing right now. Come I know. On. I, know. Playing... I, I just don't think you can, uh, you can predict it. I think it's totally unpredictable. We don't know what these people are up to behind the scenes. Uh, I mean, is this a grand plan? Uh, how are they going to so, use okay, it to when, their benefit? So are you still no going to argue with me when a MAGA person takes down Biden then? 
uh, if they if they did, uh, then first of all, there's nobody that would replace Biden now at this point that could beat Trump. There, nobody could beat Trump now. I, th yeah. I think it's crazy. Now he's untouchable. I think it's crazy. I that don't believe that. he's untouchable. I, I, I will yeah, say that. that. Is so wrong. I don't believe the that. Unless there's other the stuff that, that would happen. You know how many people said that the last last time? You know how many people said that he was untouchable and there's no way he could lose last time and he lost? So oh, not like this. I, mean, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, there's a long time. Like You're like right. There's a long time, and a lot of stuff could happen. But he, he would have to really royally fuck up now at this point. <laughs> and if they replace Biden at this point, anybody who steps in uh, is going to look like they're either part of it or what. It's right. very hard having someone jump in now at this point would be political suicide. So I, I don't know. I, I don't. I, I don't, don't agree with that. I think there's still enough. People that I think it's hate more Trump. I think it's more plausible something massive is going to happen. That's what I think, and a lot of people are worried. That I mean, something big. we just had an assassination know, attempt on the president. It's, what it's else, July, bro? What else do you want? Yeah, to I, we're think, not even I think that's uh, step number one in the big plan of things. Yeah, I feel like we're going to see a lot more this summer. Oh man, I hope not. What are we going to no. do? Aliens, Justin? Just wait for it. Are we going to go know. aliens yet? I don't know. Maybe man. it's it, yeah, it's frustrating because it's like, <laughs> are we gonna do anything about it? You know, like, and in, in, if so, if anybody does anything, it gets manipulated, and and then they just get like they find some excuse to slap charges on people that are yeah. gonna be in opposition to, uh, you know, this this crazy fucked up corrupt thing that we have. No matter know. what you believe, at the end of the day, it's it's really really sad for the American people. Yeah, it's oh, a really, know. really sad, all unfortunate time right loss, now. Loss of trust that we, yes, we can't. Everybody we can't unify over something that we're that we're that we're just continuing to drive this wedge uh, um, amongst ourselves. I think that's the result. It's such a such a such an incredible time to be alive yeah. for uh, health, prosperity. Look, uh, when you if you wars, go back, things like that, like it to 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 cause this much. If you go back, and hate. if you go back to to JFK. Uh, cause that was deep state. And then, you know, uh, what's, what, who was it afterwards? The other Kennedy, uh, also signed it. That's all deep state Robert stuff. Kennedy. Yeah. That's all been pretty established. Right. I think the deep state or whoever it is. Even is, Martin Luther King. Has been, I mean, yes. Like, come on. Like, They've been doing this for a long time. It's I, not like, yeah, it's not like this hasn't happened. I think, so I don't, you know, I think the reason why the thing is like, dude, yes. it's real. And I think the reason why it's so hard to unify people today is because media, uh, or advertising has gotten so effective that you now can go on social media, find your people, become more and more enraged because right. they've identified this a long time ago. If I want to change Doug's mind, if I want to get him to vote for me, it's way easier to do that if I get him to hate the other guy. Mm -hmm. It's way harder to get him to vote for me just because he likes me. That's yeah. hard. But getting you to vote for me because you hate the other guy, that's easy. And so when you look at what, yeah. what's put out there, it's all getting people pissed off. So that's why you see this crazy like, this divide where, you know, did you know now when people date, this was, this is weird. This only happened in the last maybe 20 years. When people date, one of the top most important things for them is the person's political yeah, um, yeah. affiliation. That's yeah. crazy. That was like, I'm not going to date someone if they yeah. vote for this person over here. Crazy. No, I know. It's become it, the religion, you know? Like you said, yeah, it's, it's all just these wedge point issues that, uh, you know, you want to highlight because it'll create the separation. You can like siphon yeah. off your voters to this direction. It got so intense. This is where we are now. You know, it, it, there's a violent uh, result of, of that kind of, uh, you know, rhetoric. Yeah. The rhetoric. Yeah. So yeah, I it's so unfortunate. We'll see. We'll yeah. see what happens. Right, what, were you, what were you guys all doing? If I was at Max's uh, uh, birthday, we had Max's little uh, birthday party. Yeah. And someone said it, and I was like, "What?" Yeah, Turn right, on the TV yeah. right away, and, and it popped up. What's we were gonna, we were gonna come to the party. Sorry, we missed it. Yeah, but we were out at this festival. My, what festival were you at? It's like, a, it was like a cider and, and beer festival. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah I do cool fun. things. You guys. Yeah, are, yeah. <laughs> well, I was going. We were heading. We were about to head over, and then in the morning, my niece. She's been staying with us for uh last five weeks or so she the night before she's like my eyes feel weird and we looked at them like it looked a little swollen huh that's kind of weird so we're like we'll keep an eye on it she woke up in the morning her eyes were so swollen both of them and you know it's not my kid so i'm like oh shit like i feel responsible uh, like what do i do huh. so uh you know i tried to make an appointment did a virtual call sent it you know the doctor's like head into the emergency or urgent urgent care they said because it could be an infection 
turned out to be some kind of weird allergic reaction. But I was like, oh man, I hope oh, my my watch oh, is poor kid. Oh, my God. <laughs> crazy affection. Yeah, that. you never want something like that on your watch. No, you know, man. Somebody else's kids. No. Like, oh my God. She didn't want to leave the, her bedroom, you know? I'm not so, coming out. I don't like the way I look. Oh, no. Sorry, it was a, Teenage it was a, girl, you know? Yeah. It was a five year old party. You guys aren't missing much or whatever, even though it was. Did you, was it good? Have, was it I mean, yeah, no, it was great. Oh, I, uh, I had forgotten how this even came to be. Like last year, um, I, I, it's so funny. It was after the fact. I was like, "Oh, that's right. This is how. This is why this played out this way." Last year, uh, leading up to Max's birthday, I remember that Katrina and I uh, got into it about it because there was so much stress and pressure. The three days leading up to who's going to do this and what are we going to do this and I got families to come over this day and and I remember and the way it went down is I remember it was like the there was like a Friday night or something I don't remember what exact day it was but it was like a night that normally would be like Katrina and I could do something and she's like oh no I gotta prep for the thing on Saturday still for Max's birthday and I was like he's four this was back yeah. <laughs> like what are you doing like <laughs> why are we spending weeks like over this and stressing over it and getting up early and staying up till midnight and like cutting into our time and other stuff like that this is ridiculous kids are not gonna remember any of this stuff <laughs> and I remember, to spend time with I remember her giving me shit and going like well then you plan his birthday party and I was like I will next year like, so, that was, that <laughs> so was, was this one planned by you yeah so, so well no Universal. So I said, you know, I'm going to do what I'm going to do for him is I'm going to do something that he wants to do that he'll remember. And that's it. And get him a present. That's it. Like, that's his birthday. Right. Yeah. So Universal Studios was my oh, idea. I go, okay. he's in love with Mario Land, like his best friend and my best friend. We all went down there and we made a weekend out of Universal Studios and it was happy birthday. Epic, yeah. Now, what I had, I forgot that's how we got to this, right? And I, re, and as we were getting closer, and Katrina's so good about like, you know, you know, you know how your wives probably know when to say stuff to you when you're, you, they know you're not listening, but they, but they can say like, I told you, yeah, you know, oh. I told you about it. Yeah. So I was probably, just say yes. yeah, exactly. So I was like, probably distracted. And Katrina's like, hey, you know, we're going to have a little family thing for Max because they won't get to go to Universal. And so I wanted to have like, a, so they could sing happy birthday to him. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's, <laughs> So I did one of those, right? And so I was like, we're getting closer to the date, uh, to his birthday. You know, here comes, like, I'm, you know, Amazon every day, you know, box after box after box of stuff. And I'm like, what's all this? What is all this? <laughs> oh, it's just decorations for Max's party. Max's party? I thought we we're just having family over like that. Well, yeah, you know, I want a couple a couple things we're going to put up like that. <laughs> Bro, by the time the, the, this weekend, and same thing happened again, the Two, three days leading up, <laughs> staying up till midnight, making and baking, oh, organizing family coming over. I thought over you it. owned this birthday. Bro. Uh, yeah, I did not own it. What's we had we had a, a, a balloon artist, we had a face painter, we had a cotton candy machine, we had a snow cone machine, we had the blow up thing, we had the wow. water slide thing. We just and then the whole house from you walking in was all Mario decorated with stuff on every wall. <laughs> all the, the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches were made out of stars from Nintendo and the bananas had little eyes and faces. I mean, it was just over the fucking top, bro. And <laughs> it's took, like a wedding. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, uh, and, and, and it, like, it didn't dawn on me until I had a moment of like, again, same thing had happened again. I can't just, remember. Just simple. I wanted yeah. to do something with Katrina and she's like, oh, I got to stay. I got to do all this stuff. I'm like, still more stuff. And then I was like, oh, I remember, this is how we got here. <laughs> and, like it all came rushing in. I went, that's right. Last year we were here. I got irritated because these parties were cutting into my alone time with my wife. And I said, next year I'm planning it. You gave me it. You let me play in Universal, but then you just threw a party on top of that. Like, <laughs> I totally lost in this situation. I had no idea. Yeah, yeah, I had two parties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> two parties. <laughs> Not only that, but then, and then he went over and saw uh, Katrina's mom. Katrina's mom decorated her house and did a thing for him. So now my son's like, what are we doing Tuesday? It's like, what? What do you mean, son? Like, am I having another birthday? And I'm like, no, dude. You're not having <laughs> yeah. any more birthday parties. Just three more parties. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's not a big deal. <laughs> dude, that is hilarious. <laughs> It was a good, it was a, it was a good time. Um, and it was, it was, did you uh, get our gift that you, you should have got an email? Uh, oh no. You know what? I haven't even, opened, oh, good. I haven't it. even opened yeah. my, uh, my email up. I will open it up. I, I should have sent it to Katrina. So, what am I doing? Yeah. yeah. yeah what do you, <laughs> what do you think? I actually, I'm glad you said that. Cause I had a couple of people say that check your email. Cause like, you got stuff that'll be coming for yeah, him. Good. But yeah, I know he's, uh, he's, he's, you know, what's so funny about him too, that I just cracking me up. I sent you guys a picture yesterday of this, this kid, uh, is timid. 
to go on the most basic, you know, kitty kitty kid ride. Uh, but screaming in the car, you know, with the engine roaring, falls asleep, <laughs> falls asleep dude. Yeah. I mean, Indian style on the on the thing, and just yeah. passes out like every single time, dude. It's the funniest thing to Cutest me. Cutest pictures, yeah. Oh, dude, us, yeah. yeah. It's uh, it's it's, it's like it's soothing, cool. yeah. Dude, it's, the, it's a the trip. Engine noise, it's like, a trip, dude. Speaking of uh, packages and stuff, I, I we got a package at, at the front, and I open it up, I'm like essential amino acids I'm like i don't know order no essential amino acids and i look at the box it's like jessica so huh? i'm like hey yeah i'm like hey what's happening yeah, here? yeah. she comes like did you, you order sponsors, amino acids right? <laughs> oh you know the doctor she she was talking on the phone with this she's working with this these uh, this hormone specialist and they're sending her some stuff they must have sold her <laughs> they must have sold her amino acids i'm like babe you got closed yeah. She's like, what do you, I'm like, do you not listen to my podcast? You listen to every episode. <laughs> yeah, I know. Why are you taking essential amino acids? Yeah. You, don't you know you can take a scoop of protein powder? <laughs> yeah. I didn't get closed like yeah, you did. She's uh, like, well, I wasn't paying attention. Katrina and I have had the exact mm. same situation with the similar type of, and then I'm like, you know what it is too? It's like different branding, different name, different something like yeah. that. And so I'm like, hun, turn it around. Look at it. It's literally what you hear us talk about, or you already have this at the house yeah, already. Like yeah. you didn't need to go buy their brand no. of their thing. No, no, no. <laughs> anyway, good time. Oh, I did. I, you know, I got to say this. I did uh, over the weekend uh, because we had to stay home. I did some grilling, and I had an you order. grilled. I did. I'm oh. not like you guys. You guys are kind of sort. Like you guys are real grill masters. I just throw it on. I didn't think you actually did it all. I, I mean, Jessica's texted me about barbecuing, and so yeah, I assume that she me. does the she's barbecue. Trying to suddenly help me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. She's back door. You were, hey, Adam, I just want to double check. Is this the right way to do this? I'm watching Sal do this shit. Yeah, yeah. Seeking here. Yeah, what you did. <laughs> that would be hella funny if that she was just, true. She, she sends me little clips of things. Like, huh? What's this? Subtle hints. <laughs> no, I, I did the ribeyes from Butcher Box. Oh, I nice. hadn't done those in a while. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because we did tri tips for so long. The ribeyes are good. Those they're actually really, really, really good. Grass fed, but they're, they taste amazing. <laughs> Yeah. So I grilled up a, a few of those, and the kids love them. It's good yeah. stuff, man. I grilled a few of the New York steaks and, and the um, sausages, and so I did that on the web. So my kids like their, the sausages yeah. from Butcher Box better than any I, of the sausages. I don't know if I've had their sausages yet. Yeah, yeah I love. I mean, I love the 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 what's the, I don't even know. What you know what I haven't done one. yet? You told me about the potatoes. Yes, I, I know, Doug. You've done it right since I've told you. Yeah, I've done the potatoes. So I have yeah. them in the freezer right now. Oh, what do you do with them, bro? Just literally. No, literally just crack an egg or two and throw it in an uh, iron skillet, all of it together. That's it. While it's frozen? No. Well, I mean- you, Defrost you, it. Yeah, defrost okay. it. Yeah, throw it in there. <laughs> that's, yeah. how, that's how much I know. <laughs> Do you yeah. take it out of the box? Yeah. You just throw the box in there. Yeah, definitely. let it, <laughs> let it defrost the <laughs> and, then, and then cook cook it like that. Literally just scramble some eggs in it and then either wrap yeah. it in a burrito or eat it straight. Oh, that's great. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is great. so good. Dude, yeah. I got to tell you, it's a funny story. I, I, I wrote this down to tell you guys because it's just, you know, when you have when you have little kids, you know, it's a pain in the ass to get out of the house. Although, I don't know. Is it hard for you guys to get out with Max? Probably not. He's pretty easy. He, I'm so Organized, ready to rock and roll. Yeah. I'm so so my kids are hard. It doesn't matter where I'm going to go. We're going to go to the park down the street. We're going to go for a walk. It's going to take at least 40 minutes <laughs> to make sure to round them up, make sure everything's fine. And whatever. So I'm, you know, we're doing this. I'm getting ready. I'm holding my daughter. She's sitting on my lap. I got the waters ready to go. We're almost ready to go. I stand up. I'm like, oh, why am I wet? Poop. Oh, that's nice. Oh. Daughter pooped all, yeah, all over me, dude. Wow. <laughs> all over me, bro. Oh. A little poop juice. And she looks at me. She knows. Yeah, that's what it was. And she looks at me, too, and she goes, Poo poo. I said, yeah, honey. Yeah. So, <laughs> Got to change you and me. It's just that's, funny. Funny. that's how I met my niece uh, uh, when I went to the hospital to see my brother. And like, I uh, first time just interacting and holding her and everything it was great. And then she just shits on you. Just blow out. And it was all went all down oh, my shirt. Awesome. Yeah. Did you just throw your shirt away? I was just always going to remember this. Oh, yeah. were, before you were a dad or already a dad? I was already a dad. Oh, okay. Yeah, so yeah. you're like, there's no, you like, didn't even face I just it. knew. Yeah. I was like, like I just well, laughed you know, it off. I was like, oh, wow. I was telling the story to my sister. I'm going to tell this at her wedding. Yeah. You know? So yeah. my sister's a, she's a, she's got three kids and she also watches kids. She's like super mom, right? So I, I had dinner with her the other night and I was telling her about this story. And uh, she's like, does that gross you out? And I'm like, you know, there's only one thing that grosses me out with little kids. Poop doesn't bother me. I mean, it's not like I like, it's just not, it's not. The it nose like, Frida. Doesn't freak, it's the fucking. Nose Frida. Bro. Is it that? Yes. Yes, me too. That is the only thing too. Burgers, not, burgers nothing, are gross, 
But why are you going to suck that, the boogers up the with your mouth? That's the only thing that gets me to. What are you oh, doing? Have I'm, you seen this? What? The nose Frida. Yeah, Doug, pull it up. I don't want to. Please pull it He's up, like, Also, the, it's a nose, also that down You know there, what a nose Doug. Frida is. Scroll well, that down it's, there. It's a, it's a, tube it's a clear in. tube like this. It has a filter in it, so nothing gets in your mouth, but it's still disgusting. No, I've seen yeah, moms do that. Okay, so so up. normally you have a bulb. You know the, the old school yeah, blue the bulb? Bulbs? That's yeah. What, yeah. Okay. That's a nose Frida. That's it right there. You put it up your nose, your baby's nose, and then you use your mouth to create the suction. Yeah. It, no, it, it's they're like you're siphoning they're for gas. Extremely but effective, but disgusting. Disgusting. And I, and I, Katr- I will never use it. I, can't, I won't use it. Never. Either. I won't use it either. Katrina's always like, yeah, I remember when Max was little and we used oh. to do, have to and do like, this. Like, it doesn't that. go in your mouth. Uh, I don't yeah. care. The matter. opportunity's there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oops. Oh. Oops, I sucked too hard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I know people are going to freak out and go like, it's impossible. It doesn't even matter that it's impossible. It's the simple fact that you are sucking. You're sucking and while boogers are coming yeah, out. Yeah, it's just, it doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's wrong. Look it's, at it. Look at the picture of the mom doing that. That's yeah. Jessica. She's like, like, oh, I get it. So It'll clear their Never sinuses. Never will yeah. I do that. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. get poop all over me all day long, They're baby. extremely yeah, no. effective, but they are, they, I'm the same way, bro. Of all, like I, I had, that, my goddaughter was on my lap. I told you guys this, like when we were up in Truckee, not that, just a couple weeks ago or whatever. And you know she's I, I can feel her pissing on me, and I don't even feel you know care, so yeah. Yeah, yeah I still play with her to let her finish you know what I'm saying and then I'll move don't her off her. yeah then I'll move her off my thigh and my pants are so like I don't get uh, none of that stuff but bothers the boogers, me dude. but the, that is oh. God, that's the one thing I don't dude. get it dude yeah. yeah my sister's like oh yeah I use it all the time and I'm yeah. like and then she's like oh one time the filter came off I'm like all right Ooh. that's enough oh, well really? this isn't quite as gross but it's alarming uh, apparently. There's this company out there, like, so you know how AI is, like, just taking over, and um, the biggest, I guess, deterrent right now is it, it requires so much energy uh, yeah. to, to produce, and so, like, there's this company trying to be, like, all, you know, I'm futuristic, and we're, we're going to tackle this problem, so you know what they're doing? They're growing little or organic brains, and the, the brains are connecting to these... Um, uh, like these processing systems, organic, yeah. like actual, like organic brain, neural networks, neural networks to basically create. Now, uh, is, I feel like the the matrix is, is that matrix? it's called Final <laughs> Spark. You look it up, Doug. Final. So, spark. what what is considered a centurion? What's a let's a what's a like where it's a like, like a cyborg? You mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, is it called cyborg? I thought it was centurion. cyborg's the one that's like your um, half your half machine, yeah. half human. Yeah. Okay, okay, so centurion. So, Did I thought you it make was that word up. I thought no, a centurion wasn't a thing. I don't look know. up centurion, Doug. Okay, I'm word. doing this final okay. spark thing. Gotta first. be faster. Yeah. Gotta be faster. Yeah. Hold on. I'm gonna, I'll yes. Google that. No, but it. apparently, they're trying to say because of the uh, the human brain and or like uh, you know organic tissue and, you and it, it requires a whole lot less energy. Well, there's so they a think cent- that they've solved this. There's a centurion, which is a Roman uh, was in the Roman army. No, it's not that. Uh, I don't see anything else about centurion. Bio. Yeah, they call it the bio computer. That's so they're using real brain, like little like, brain, like, like lab grown brain tissue that's that seems dangerous <laughs> yeah right like what uh what kind of uh function and you know, well, it's always it's always it so crazy when stuff like this like when sci-fi We're just movie, meddling dude. sci-fi movies seem to be unfolding no morals <laughs> now we just meddle dude and we just create things because we can create things well, you, you have to have, I mean, that's <laughs> science is a method. It's not a morality. So yeah. I like the name final spark. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I don't know. Oh my God. <laughs> they don't really? joke around. And yeah. the thing, it's, I don't know how far they've really got, you know, how all these like uh, technology companies yeah. will like show some graphic cool thing of like, but you know, are they really creating this or are they just putting that out there to try and, you know, claim they're on the forefront of science. Well, this is what we know too. We don't know what's what's right. look at that instant access to human neurons. Okay, wow. that's crazy, what? dude. It's, you imagine we turn it on. We're like, all right, everybody, check it out. We turn it on. It's like, help me, <laughs> please kill me. You know, <laughs> no, I'll turn it off. Oh God, gross. Give me a body. My uh, uh, we we bought um, Jessica bought my my three year old. So my three year old is just he's a, he's a good time. He's he's on fire half the time, but he's he's a good time. <laughs> She bought him a fa- a little lawnmower that blows bubbles. Oh uh, yeah! And so I remember it, those. Those are cool. Yeah. So it comes in the mail. Is that the ones where you put it click 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 and it and it comes out the top like that? Yeah, well, this they one had you push a button kids. and it shoots bubbles out. Oh, Okay. Yeah, but it's a little plastic lawnmower, right? So we open up the box and he's like, "So my son, when the gardener comes, he was, he likes to sit at the door and watch the gardener. He yeah. thinks it's so cool, right? So we open it up and he sees it and he goes." Oh my God. And he gets so animated when he's excited. It's almost like he's acting. It's so funny. He goes like this with his hands and he goes, 
I'm so excited. This is so amazing. And then we open it up <laughs> and he's like rolling around the house. He's so pumped. And I'm like, oh my God, they're going to love playing with this tomorrow because it's right before bed. So he's all hyped, right? Wakes up the next day. Jessica takes him outside. He starts pushing on the grass and he's like, it's not working. She's like, what do you mean? The bubbles come out. She's like, he's like, the grass isn't, isn't getting shorter. <laughs> uh, he like, wanted the real he, thing. He, yeah. <laughs> She's like, honey, lawn this is not a real lawnmower. Oh, oh lost his shit. Bro, that's Got so, so upset. He wants a real lawnmower. I remember. Oh. <laughs> I remember when I was a kid. I can't remember how old I was. I was older than Aurelius for sure, but I wasn't I wasn't that old. I was old enough though to re I re recall this story. I my grandmother one year, I wanted a remote control car so bad. So bad. And I was at an age already where I'd already been paying attention to all the coolest ones that were out there. And you know, my grandma like always came through. Like when I was a kid, I know we've talked about stories of me not having much. My grandma always spoiled me. Yeah. Like, like I always rely on grandma to like get me the cool gift or get clothes for me, things like that. And so Christmas came around and I remember opening it and it was a remote control car with the wire still attached oh, to the car. No! And I, I remember, no. and looking back now, like what a little shit I was. I remember yeah, no, like- it's Just your expectation ones. wasn't I, there. Yeah. Yes. I was devastated. I was upset. I was a little brat. I mean, it was awful. I know I was an awful kid from that, but I remember because it was so built up, I couldn't wait. Mm -hmm. And I remember opening it, being so excited as a remote control, and then the wire was still attached <laughs> to it. It's, it's just like- This happens so many like, times. This is the worst thing yeah. ever. Like, or the one that goes, it, it goes in one direction, and in the turn, you have to go backwards and it turns yeah, itself. Yeah, 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 the shitty yeah. ones that would do that. Yeah. 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 Well, anyways, he's so so he was super upset. So I don't know. Two days later, freaking a real leaf blower comes in the mail. A real leaf blower. Your wife bought him a real yes, leaf dude, a real one, <laughs> a real one. Like not like pretend. Like it comes in now. She she but she fucked up again. I open up the box. I'm like, honey, where's the um battery? No battery. She's like, what do you mean? I'm like, it doesn't come with a battery or charger. We got to buy it separately. So my son's so bad. He's Batteries like, not I want it to work. I'm like, I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> so instead, you know what we did? Home Depot, you Here's dad, dad to the rescue. What so I'm like, do? what am I going to do with this, this leaf blower that doesn't even work, right? So, you know, I don't know if this is a good dad moment or a bad dad moment, <laughs> but I showed him the clip. We'll know in 10 years. <laughs> no, I, show, I showed him a clip from Predator where, where, where the dude is shooting the minigun. Oh, my God. Where, I'm like, you know what we could do with this? We can pretend like it's a minigun and we're killing aliens. Yeah. <laughs> so I showed him this violent ass scene. <laughs> <laughs> so running, he's running around the house like, da -da 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 -da, <laughs> blasting everybody with his, with his, his leaf blower. Oh, my like God. We'll have some fun tonight. Yeah. Oh yeah. God, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we got the batteries will be here soon. And then I, I can't wait. I'm going to videotape. I'll show you guys. As oh soon as I do. I'm like, <laughs> It's yeah. all heavy, you know. Yeah, like, just you know loud things, you know, <laughs> yeah, that dude. make noise and yeah. But oh. he wants the real one, dude. That's I mean, so great. I don't blame him. You know? Oh, dude. God, so when I was a kid, I feel like telling him, man. When I was a kid, I did not want to mow the lawn. My dad made me all the time. That's what I had to do all the time. He's when's his fourth birthday? When is uh, it? When's it's not November. November. Yeah. Yeah. that's right. I should, should be able to remember in November. Yeah, uh, it's so crazy. To think I know. So, uh, is he still uh, hitting balls? And he's still like, yeah, dude. He's so boy energy, bro. He's so I sent you guys his text, right? So he figured out. Yeah. He so his mom lets him text with her phone while she's there, and what he'll do is typically send emojis or pictures and 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 send them to me. So I'll get like a hundred texts in a row from my son. Cause he's like, Oh, I'm talking to, to, to dad. Well, she taught him how to use voice text. So I get these texts and it says stuff like, uh, hi, Papa. How's your day? I hope it's good. Today wasn't good. I want to punch Dahlia in the face. I want to punch mom in the face. I want to break things. I'm like, what is going on? I screenshot and said to you yes, guys, yes. what did he say? This kid. <laughs> Very expressive. Yeah, you know, he is on fire. Yeah. You don't you want know, this on record. It's so funny because it's like, uh, he reminds me so much of my godson. Uh, he's a hunter is, is like a really, they're, they're like, would be two peas in a pod. Their, their energy is the same. And, and it's so the opposite spectrum of of max yeah. such a good balance for me right it, so i see all the things in his son that i'm like man i wish yeah. you know his son's like i'm gonna score six goals and goes out and scores seven in yeah. a game you know what i'm saying like and he's just he's not afraid of all the rides let's do the next yeah. ride let's go let's go and they're only a year apart i know my son's a little bit younger so i'm like a little patient but i mean i remember hunter doing stuff like that way back and and justin's just like bro he's like I would trade you in a minute for that energy you got oh. there. And I and I and I said, you know, I it's good for me to have the the polar opposite extreme as an example because it helps me 
get through those dad moments that I've struggled with, yeah. with the like wanting him to be more aggressive. It's like, yeah, but then you know what's really cool is like he sits in a car with me for six hours. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And just we hang out oh, and he yeah. sleeps and yep. it's like it's not normal. I forget that that's not a normal thing for a four or five year old no, kid totally. to no. be able to just do that and be content. You mm -hmm. know, like. So I got to remember that stuff, and it helps having a uh, you know you tell your stories, and then having him as a best friend and a godson to see the the other side because it's hard as a dad sometimes. Mm -hmm. You see the opposite, and you're like, God, oh, I wish he was like that. But, uh, yeah, it was cool. It reminded me uh, uh, since Everett's been off gymnastics, Ethan's still doing it. Um, like his season ended. This is the first time he's actually like deliberately asked me to go work out with him and like wow. you know, take him, oh, to, that's take cool. him through a full workout. That's great. And it was like, it was so great. It was, it was like, it was funny too, because like he's, you know, he's got a pretty good established like strength base, you know, from his athletics, but it's like, it's actually lift weights. That was a whole new experience. Uh, but yeah, we had a good time doing that's, that. That's good. My, my, yeah. when my nephew was here, uh, when Jessica's <laughs> nephew was here, he 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 inquired about strength training and i took him through some workouts but you never know if it'll stick he's only 14 right mm -hmm. you never know if it'll stick i bought protein shakes for him uh and i started noticing that he would go in the fridge and grab them and drink them i'm not saying anything you know although every once in a while i probably lay it on a little bit so i'm like that's cool right and just because <laughs> always like nudging me like don't push it too hard because i have a tendency to do that so i kind of left it or whatever well anyway i get a picture from his dad he's working out his own Oh, uh, that's cool. Yeah, dude. They got him a dumbbell set, and he's, like, supposedly consistent in doing it. It's, like, so cool, you know? Oh, yeah. Such that an is. impactful thing for a kid to pick up. It's such a growth-minded endeavor. Oh, yeah. It's and Now, initially, as a kid, it might be based off, like it is for adults. Like, I just want to look better. I just want to get jacked or whatever. But it's it requires it consistency. Opens the door. It opens requires the door. discipline. Yeah. It, they have to deal with uh, failure. They have to deal with disappointment. They have to deal with they learn work. Hard work turns into this. Yeah. If I don't work hard, then I don't get this, and then I have to. And you have to figure out problems if you stay consistent with it long enough. You develop a good relationship with pain and the whole deal. Like what a great sports thing for a kid. or working out. I'll totally be excited for my son to get into either yeah. one. Like either one, I'm okay with any sport, uh, any any form of training or, or or like working towards working out. Like I, those two things because there's so many lessons as a dad to be able to teach your son or daughter through that. the sports or the working out yeah. will do it for you. Yeah. There's so many lessons yeah. in there and opportunities. Yeah. And I think this is, you're looking for as, as a dad is like, where I have all these things you want to teach your son, but you also know that I can't just lay it on him. Like I'm lecturing. Yeah, you him can't just time. sit him down. Yeah. Cause then it's never going to see. Let me, me tell so you about adversity. I need to find, yeah, yeah. I need to find these opportunities within his life when they present themselves that I can then teach him. And that's, what's going to stick. And so those, those vehicles I think are just great opportunities for that. Justin, now, did you, uh, did you, uh, how did you do it? How did you handle it? Did you overdo it? Did you get excited? Yeah, I, like I didn't want to, yeah, exactly. I had to, I had to kind of calm myself down. So I just, I picked three exercises and, and then we did like three rounds of each. Uh, and we just were real slow, methodical about the form and everything else. And I just, I had him do like a kettlebell deadlift. I had him, uh, let's see, we did, um, we did a, a row. So he learned like, you know, to, to hold himself and stabilize and everything mm -hmm. while, you know, uh, doing a, a dumbbell row. Um, and then we did, uh, what was the other one? I think it was, I think it was like a bench press or was it overhead press? I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Of course. And overhead is he, uh, during the process, is he asking you a bunch of questions? Is he just going through it? Like what was his like? Yeah. Reception? I mean, uh, yeah, he was he was like very much like waiting for the cues, which I was like, wow, this is pretty like advanced for for a kid because you know for the most part I'm trying to like slow them down and not be all like yeah, yeah. out. They get bored easily too. It's hard. It's hard. Yeah. So he was even just like intuitively was like, okay, well now what you know what am I focusing on here? Like, and I'm trying to like I, I actually was able to kind of like prod him a bit like tighten your abs like you know pull your shoulders back and you know all that stuff and kind of walk my way That's around so him. and so it was great because he's I think he's realizing that he's a little bit stronger than his peers. And like, that's 
he doesn't care about anything else other than being stronger than them. And I'm <laughs> like, dude, I can work with that. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'll we'll work on that together. And so, yeah, it was actually really a, a rad experience. That's awesome. How was uh, how was the hip hinging? That's always the hardest, I think, thing to teach a kid is to how to. It's hinge. hard to teach anybody. I know it is. It's hard to teach anybody, yeah. and then especially kids. To yeah, do. yeah. So it was. I mean, again, like it was deliberate. So he set the weight back down. You know, read set and then adjusted his body like tightened certain places like engaged his lats like he, and he would deliberately did like each one of the cues and then came Perfect. up and so yeah i was pretty happy i was at the i was at the gym the other morning working out if i ever see a like a really um old person working out or a really young person or i see somebody that looks like they're just getting started i always have the urge this is the old gym manager in me yeah yeah i always have the urge to go up to them and give them a fist bump or let them know they're doing a good job or, or encourage them. So I see this kid and he's 12. He look, I, I know he's 12 cause I asked him afterwards, but he was young and he's working out what seems to be his mom. And he was working hard, man. Like his mom, she looked like she knew what she was doing and she put him on the, you know, the pec deck and he's like, he's really going for it. And then he's doing rows. And as I'm working out every once in a while, I peer over there and I see this kid, you know, he's like the youngest guy in the gym working out. So I couldn't help myself. And I go up to him, and uh, I give him a fist bump. I take out my, pull my headphone down uh, to the side a little bit. I give him a fist bump. I said, you're doing a great job. Bro, the, 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 it lit him up. Like the smile on his face. Because mm -hmm. he sees this old jack guy to him, right? Yeah. Give him a fist bump. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he looks at me like, and I'm like, how old are you, buddy? And he goes, I'm 12. I said, you know, I started working out when I was 14. You started working out before me. And then he really lit up. Like, really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, absolutely. And then his mom walks over. And I'm like, great job, you know, bringing him over. She's like, oh, he's totally into it or whatever. And I'm like, you know, you should have him listen to my podcast. They were not familiar with our podcast, so I introduced them. But it's so cool. It's great to see that. that it's such cool. a great thing. It's one of my favorite things to do is just to say you're kicking ass, you know. You're doing sure. a good job. No, especially at that age to have enough. Did you, do you know if he was playing a sport or something like that? We, we literally talked for uh, just a brief Yeah, moment. not even 60 seconds. I'd say that's probably, the, wouldn't you guys say that? That's the most, if I see a kid that's that young, Training. He's training because he, he's a into a sport. It's rare that you see like a 12 or 13. Very rare. You, you know, I always get into it early. I always otherwise. think back to one of my first clients. Uh, so, I mean, I started training at 18 and I had this kid, this parents hired me to train there. I forgot. I think he was 14 years old. And I asked him, I'll never forget. We're sitting down talking about personal. Actually, I sold him a membership first, the whole family. And then the, the, the mom's like, well, you know, what about personal training for our son? And he was this chubby kid and he was shy. He really didn't say a word. And we started talking and uh, I finally, I asked the kid cause they were like, ah, I don't think we'll do training. We'll wait on it or whatever. And then I, I looked at the kid and I said, do you want to do, do you want to work with a trainer? And he's kind of quiet and his mom's like, go ahead and answer him. And he goes, yeah. And I said, why? And I'll never forget. Dude, the kid looked at me and he says, um, I don't want to take my shirt off at the pool. Mm. And, uh, man, it hit me as, uh, when he said that. And I mm -hmm. said, all right, all right, I get it, dude. And I said, you know, when I started and I told him whatever, and they hired me anyway, this kid only worked out with me for six months, but the transformation he made in his, uh, character was so profound. This kid walked in the gym, chest high, excited, everybody forced uh, yeah. high five him Confidence because he's the youngest. the roof. He ended up becoming a trainer. That's awesome. He ended up, I, I, I ran into him years later and he came up to me. He's like, dude, I didn't recognize him. And he's like, I'm a trainer. I've been doing, you know, you changed my life or whatever. I only trained the kid for six months, but I'll never forget that. You Did know? you have him come watch a live show a long time ago? No, that was another kid. Uh, okay. Yeah, that was another kid. I remember you had another kid. Yeah, kids, oh. you know, the reason why they weren't my favorite people to train or category it's because they're hard. Oh, they're so hard. I, you know, they elderly really are, are very it's, rewarding as well. Kids are. It's rare that they're into it. Usually yeah, these get that's why it becomes and, entertainment. Yeah, you got to keep and them. And I couldn't. I had such a hard time with it. I didn't. I admittedly, I I did not like training kids and like would avoid it like the plague. You have to turn it, it into fun time because it, it, it <laughs> felt it did and it felt like I was more of a glorified yeah. babysitter than I yes. felt like a trainer. And I just like training so much. At yeah. that. You know, I wanted I wanted to be. Able, and so you like having clients that you can tell them what to do, and then, which is also why I love you know, CEOs, high performers. It wasn't just because financially they yeah. could afford the training. It's that I love people. They that, would do it. Yes. I love yeah. people that can be like this, this, and this. Apply it right away. And then they go, they apply it and yeah. then they can see it. And then we, or if they don't see the results then we can adjust very easily. See, the kids tell. were hard, but when it got great was when they started asking questions about, yeah. uh, when they caught fire. And, and also like, oh, not just is... about fitness, but they would ask questions about other stuff. Like sure. I had this one kid like and what? this I'll never forget because I almost, the mom almost fired me. 
he was getting bullied mm. and he would tell me about getting bullied and I'd bite my lip like, oh, this really pissing me off, you know, and what's your mom telling you to do? <laughs> she tells me to walk away and I'm biting my lip and I'm biting my lip. And I'm like, I remember I couldn't hold it in. He had come in where we're, and I'm like, how was today? He's like, it sucked. They were following me home from school. They ripped my backpack off. Tell me all shit, right? And I'm like, you know, and I'm like, all right, how do I communicate this without getting in trouble? <laughs> so I said, you know, I got bullied. I made up a story because I'm like, how do I tell him? Like, I got bullied one time. He's like, you did? I'm like, yeah. He's like, what'd you do? I said, well, I couldn't take it anymore. And I turned around and I punched the kid right in the nose. His eyes watered. And then they left me alone. Well, the kid did that. <laughs> he came to me the next week, bro. And he got in big trouble because he punched the kid. Oh. And I'm like, oh, did you tell your mom about my story? <laughs> because I hope he did it, you know? But also, did, they left him alone. did it work? <laughs> yeah, they left him yeah, alone. It yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was, that was a tough one. That's so right. Yeah. So we, let's, uh, let's do a shout out. So you got a book, Justin? Is it kind of like along the lines of some of the weird shit? Yeah, it's a romantic book <laughs> yeah, uh, right. that, that Courtney yeah, and right. I are both reading. Actually, well, yeah, listening to because it's an audio book. But are you guys both listening to an audio book? We are. And, and you know the irony of that? It's like, yeah, we, let's do this so we have something to talk about and connect with and kind of like, you know, along the lines of one of your uh, suggestions. Yeah, yeah. And, of course, we end up with – both murder and conspiracy <laughs> are two loves. So right. chaos, it, it goes over like the whole Manson uh, trial, but then gets uh, a little oh. bit further detail of like how to, uh, this kind of ties into MK ultra and a lot of uh, other uh, links. Dude, that, how did you not bring this up earlier? I love, would love to hear your experience. Did you just start this? So we just start, I'll, I'll get into it as I get further down the road, but I, I've, I'm through the Manson trials. Uh, and like all that information, and now we're getting into the good stuff. So. Well, I'm I'm even more excited to hear your experience with Courtney, and if you notice that stuff, I always I've, I it's one of my favorite tips to couples. Uh -huh. I just think that at least oh, it's for, great. Yeah, so far it's sparking good dialogue, and and I think it's uh, overall has been good so far. Oh, cool. Author Tom O'Neill. By now, you've probably heard of the benefits of cannabinoids like CBD. Well, anyway, we work with a company called Ned that makes full-spectrum hemp oil extracts. They're high in CBD. But here's the deal. You feel Ned. Other products, you take it and you wonder, what the heck? Uh, did I take anything? Is it doing anything? With Ned, you really feel it. This is legit. It's full-spectrum. It's strong. And it really, really works. Go check them out. Go to helloned.com. That's H-E-L-L-O-N-E-D.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump for 20% off. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Carlin from Ohio. Hi, Carlin. How you doing, Carlin? How can we help you? What's happening? Hi. Well, um, thanks for having me on. Thanks for taking my question. So I I wrote in about um, I'm I'm on TRT. I've been on TRT for about a year now. I basically got pregnant in 2021 and I gained a ton of weight during pregnancy. I gained like a hundred pounds. Something was definitely off. I had my son and eventually met with a hormone specialist where he found I had very low testosterone. I think it was like 16 NG or whatever the measurement may be. Um, and without question, I just started TRT at the time. Um, now I'm on basically 12 and a half milligrams a week. And shortly after I started the testosterone, I found out I had several nutrient deficiencies um, like iron and B12. And that's kind of changed my relationship with nutrition and exercise. And um, basically I, I, I'm asking if, well, let me backtrack a little bit. Testosterone, when I started, it definitely improved a lot of things. It improved my sex drive. It improved my motivation. Um, I definitely put on some muscle, which was really great. And I'm basically asking if ever coming off testosterone could be appropriate for me or if possibly just staying on it might be the best thing for me. You know, I, I, have no real way of telling at this point. I'm trying to find like the root cause of why I have low sex hormones or low nutrients and stuff like that. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Carlin, are you, are um, you, you're looking to get off uh TRT? Is your question about getting off of it or? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if I, or if, she should, if it could, yeah, if I should basically like if it could be appropriate for me too, or if, because it's working so well that it would be, okay to just stay on it. There's just so much 
conflicting things about it. And I have no real way of knowing at this point right now if, you know, my low testosterone and my low nutrients are potentially poor diet related. Um, but I'm wondering if it could be appropriate now that I'm exercising regularly and my nutrition's pretty on point, if it would be appropriate to try it without it. So, so this ultimately would be a question for, um, your, your, uh, a specialist, right? The hormone doctor that you're working with, but I can speak out of experience of working with clients, um, who've been on TRT, women who've been on TRT. Now, first thing I need to ask you is, did you fix those nutrient deficiencies or are they still present? So I am, I'm, I'm working on it. Um, so basically I got, I, I got a endoscopy r result yesterday actually, which is right, right before I, or right after I wrote into you guys. Mm -hmm. Um, and I probably have H pylori. Yeah. Um, and so I was actually reading about that too. That can affect testosterone Definitely. levels. Um, so yeah, I've been working on the nutrients themselves, but not necessarily the root cause of why the nutrients are low. Cause I just figured out yeah, if, why. If, if you have gut health issues, so H pylori can cause ulcers and inflammation in the gut and can affect, um, nutrient absorption. So you could eat, you know, all the, the B vitamins and, you know, foods with iron, you can supplement. And if you're finding like, it's not making a big dent, um, or you need to take like these huge amounts to make a difference. There's oftentimes a, a, a an absorption issue. There's an issue with you assimilating those nutrients, and it typically goes to the to, to gut health. So I'm glad you got that test. And if it is in fact just H pylori, that's a pretty easy fix. You go on H, you go on sure. some antibiotics, gets rid of it, take some probiotics afterwards, and then you you, you should notice some some um, some big benefits. Unless there's this, some other stuff that's going on, a functional medicine practitioner would be somebody that you'd want to work with to look at that stuff. Now, uh, TRT, um, are you still noticing the, the benefits that you got initially? Cause sometimes people go on it they, for three, four months. I feel great. And then afterwards it's like, Oh, it's gone. Are you still noticing the benefits that you got when you first went on it? Um, yeah, I mean, for the most part, the only thing that's really different is, you know, my sex drive is not as crazy it was, as it was initially, but that's kind of to that's be normal. expected. But as far as the, um, I feel like my muscle growth is still like improving in ways that it never has ever okay. in my life. Um, and I also feel like I am more motivated. I, I feel like there's a lot of benefit to it. It's just, um, now that I'm on like this whole very like naturalistic path and stuff, it just feels so wrong to be injecting, <laughs> you know, yeah. like this, this synthetic hormone. Sometimes, uh, but it does seem to help. Yeah. Sometimes people need to take, um, hormones because we can't figure out why they're not producing enough or why it's not balancing out properly. Um, and that's true for testosterone as well. But oftentimes, uh, especially if you're young, which you are, the, um, lifestyle can change that for the positive. So, and you even see this with, with disease states, like you even see this with prediabetes, where somebody's body's not responding to insulin, then they get healthy and fit and it reverses, right? Um, so, you, and you can see this even with thyroid sometimes with autoimmune issues where they'll avoid certain foods, work on their gut health, and then they're no longer hypothyroid um, as a result or not having symptoms of hypothyroidism because they're, they've got their immune system to react properly. But this would be something you'd want to do with a functional medicine practitioner. And what they'll do is they'll look at a variety of different things move you through the process of, you know, healing your gut. If that's the issue, looking at other areas, maybe there's mold toxicity, a parasite, who knows, right? They'll go through and, and they'll work through these, through a natural process of getting your body to where it needs to go. And then from there you would work on reducing and then eliminating testosterone and then measuring symptoms and testosterone levels afterwards. You know, when it comes to sex drive, by the way, there are physiological drivers of sex drive, but a lot of it is also lifestyle, right? Like there's a lot of things that can affect sex. Like you can have great testosterone, but if your stress is high, 
if you're arguing with your spouse, if you're whatever, like you just you might not be in the mood, um, you know, not getting enough sleep or whatever. I mean, you could have synthetically high testosterone and have shitty sleep. You're not going to be in the mood. Um, and I'm using a simple example, but, um, you know, uh, although physiological drivers of, of libido are also very important. My point is you're going to want to work with someone who understands this thing from a holistic standpoint. And the, the way where I would point you would be a functional medicine practitioner. Now we have a forum, um, for that. Uh, what's the name of our forum is MP holistic health. Holistic health. Yeah. This is on Facebook. It's a free forum. Okay with functional medicine practitioners and people who ask for help or whatever. And you can get a lot of free advice there, but then also you can work with one of their, these are people we vetted. You can work with one, one, one of the functional medicine practitioners on Dr. Cabral's team. He's been on our mm -hmm. show many times. And then they can take you through this process and you can tell them, Hey, I want to try getting off testosterone and they'll be honest with you. They'll go through the process and they'll say, yeah, we could take you off. You look great. Or no, it looks like you're gonna have to stay on this because we can't seem to figure out what's, uh, you know, why it's so low. Um, but that's, that would be the direction I would go. Okay. You feel like, um, one of those practitioners would be, cause it is very difficult to find somebody who's educated in all these different yes. things, you mm -hmm. know? So do you feel like Cabral's one of those yes. people would be Cabral's a good fit? Team. 100%. 100%. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There, there, that's your best bet for getting your body, yeah. Uh, and your health where you want it. Cause they look at everything from a holistic standpoint. So they will do lots of testing. They sure. will look yeah. at all your hormones. They will look at your nutrients uh, levels. They will also look at inflammation. They will look at your gut health. Um, and then they'll take it from there. Um, and then based off of what they see, they know what other tests to do. They won't prescribe hormones. They don't do that. Um, or testosterone. Uh, they definitely don't do that. But at the end of it, they can, take you through the process of taking you off and observe what's going on and then say, yeah, I think it's appropriate you're on testosterone or not. I'm going to tell you this right now for lots of, uh, healthy young people, especially women, oftentimes they, in my experience, they can come off for men. Sometimes it be, it tends to be a little bit more challenging because the levels that we need are so much higher that when you see it in the floor, uh, that can be a harder, sometimes a harder problem to, uh, to, to, to fix, I would say. Um, I've seen, okay. but I've seen women go off testosterone many, many times through changing lifestyle. So it's possible, but you would have to do it with somebody who understands this holistically and that would be your best bet. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Can I ask, did, did like the women you've seen come off of it, did, were they on it long-term and were still successful coming off? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you've only been on for a year. I had a, uh, you know, I had a client that was on for years, um, and she came off, uh, and was, and, and felt great. Um, yeah, more often than not, I'll be honest with you. Now, some people don't want to go and, and uh, are not like you and saying, okay, let me look at all the different things. Oftentimes people are like, I feel fine. I don't care. I'm not going to look at any other, you know, potential root issues. And I get mm -hmm. that, you know, life gets difficult and challenging, you know, being on testosterone feels better. Um, but, uh, I, like I said, I've worked with lots of women who've, who've come off and we're told, and, and some of them were older. Younger women is like, I mean, that oftentimes yeah. we can, we, oftentimes I've seen them come off is, is what I've experienced. Yeah. The functional medicine and naturopath kind of direction is, is your best bet for anything that's like root cause or anything that's a chronic issue. So, um, you know, that's, that's really where you're going to get closest to a lot of the answers that will move the needle the most for you and, and any underlying issues uh, they may be able to detect and, and give you kind of a protocol for that. I, I'm very optimistic for you that you'll have success with this. Uh, cause to Sal's point, <clears throat> this is my experience too, is that, uh, the, the female clients I had that didn't come off or couldn't come off the testosterone were the ones that weren't willing to do the holistic approach. They just didn't want to put the time in. They didn't want to take the test. They didn't want to try and troubleshoot. They didn't want to, they didn't want to try and do it holistically. They just wanted the, the quickest fix they possibly could. And taking synthetic testosterone was that for them. The fact that you're already exploring that on your own, and then now we're helping you guide you through Cabral's team on that side. I feel very confident that with them and with your mindset that you absolutely can come off of it and, and fix the root cause. Cool. Cool. That's great news. Yep. Yeah. Go on that forum, uh, ask to be invited or, or included in there. It's, it's free for everybody. It's MP holistic health. You can ask questions okay. there, read the forum, and then you can talk to their team. Uh, again, these are people we vetted. 
They're really the, they're the best that we've come across at what they do. And um, you've already done an endoscopy, identified H. pylori. If there's any other tests you could show them, they could use those tests, and they can also they could also put forward other tests to have you do to to look a little deeper. But you would be shocked at how big of a difference. Um, you know, especially when you're talking about nutrient deficiencies on top of this, um, there's mm -hmm. a gut issue going on. Your H. pylori is a big one, by the way. That's a, that's a big deal. You know, back in the day, before we identified H. pylori, you know, we just thought people got ulcers. We said, oh, you got ulcers. So just, you know, take antacids and, uh, try not to stress yourself out. Now we know the major cause of ulcers because H. pylori will do that over time is this yeah. bacteria that's actually pretty successfully treated with conventional Western medicine, pretty successfully. So, and, and then that, as your gut heals, you can start absorbing stuff. Otherwise you have malabsorption and that's probably what's yeah. happened. You said B vitamins and, and iron. Yeah. And folate. Fo very common. Yeah. Yeah. So those are yeah. common in my experience. Those are common nutrient deficiencies in people with gut issues. So yeah. once, once you solve that, you should start feeling like, Oh, this is feel, I feel a lot better eating the same food that you're currently eating. Yeah, thank you guys. Thanks for having me on. You got it. All Good right. luck, okay? Yep. Thank you so much. Thanks, Carlin. Yeah, you know, um I like I like that mentality around um, you know, medical intervention. Yeah. Like, you know, because it's first of all, it's valuable when you need it. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's also important to be like, okay, is there a way I can not be dependent on this intervention? And sometimes there is no way. Sometimes you just yeah. can't find the way, in which case that's okay. But sometimes there is a way, and um, and then that's very freeing, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, and that takes a lot of uh, foresight to really, you know, go beyond the fact that, like, right now you feel good because you found yeah. an intervention, but uh, really, like, uh, to to go deeper and find that root cause, you know, it takes work and it takes time and effort. Uh, but on the other side of that, you know, it, you could really like end up. Uh, resolving it completely. Yeah, I think your advice or permission you gave her to basically stay on the testosterone while you pursue these tests and figure this out. You yeah. can do both simultaneously yeah. yes. and start to say, because helping. the mistake that someone might make in this situation is they want to go the holistic route and so they just cut the synthetic testosterone oh, and right away like and then they feel like trash and now they don't have the, the motivation to work out anymore, the motivation That's to right. make good choices and so then it just spirals them out. It's like, no, you can absolutely stay on that because it's obvious from her feedback that she's seen uh, massive positive benefits mm -hmm. from the synthetic testosterone. So stay on it, but yet still be trying to figure out, well, what's the root cause that was causing this and try and solve that, the holistic approach. And then when you feel like you've checked all the boxes, okay, we fixed the H. pylori, we, my deficiencies are good. I've been consistent. Now let's see if I can taper off this testosterone and see if I can keep it up there. And they absolutely will help you do that. I mean, that's the the whole purpose of the relationship that we've built with both companies, right? The idea of us having that is that we always are going to point people in the direction of trying to get to the bottom of it holistically, yeah. but then we also have the the a, a team that supports you on the synthetic side also. So, but always go that direction first if you can. Our next caller is Jared from Texas. What's up, Jared? What's going on, Jared? How you doing? What's happening, man? Hey guys, how's it going? Good, 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 man. How can we help you? Appreciate you guys having me. Um, let me jump right into my question. It should be, I assumed it was a pretty straightforward one uh, about supersets, actually, um, specifically pairing a unilateral exercise with a bilateral exercise. So just as an example, you guys have um, in your aesthetics program, which I'm doing right now, a few different examples of this, um, one of which is like a lat pull down superset with a single arm dumbbell row. Um, and in doing this exercise, when I jump into that dumbbell row, that arm is exhausted already from the lat pull downs, whereas my other arm will be a little bit rested by the time I get to it. So I was just curious if that was designed that way um, or if, if there's something that I could be doing to maybe challenge myself. What I had done is each set just alternating which arm I'm starting with, but I don't know if that's appropriate, if there's another way um, that it was intended for that. Yeah, there's three, there's three ways you could you could approach this. One is what you said. You alternate which arm you start with. Two is you start with your weaker arm and then mirror those reps with the other arm, even though you think you could do more. And then three is to do the unilateral exercise bilaterally. So it's single arm dumbbell row. You could do both dumbbells at the same time if this is really messing with your head. So it's just three approaches on how you would do it. Um, and I've done each of them. 
And I think there's no real wrong way uh, to approach it. I think the, the, if, you know, since we're splitting hairs, cause it is kind of yeah. splitting hairs. I mean, you could even alternate it. Yeah. Well, that's what he did. That's what, that's we, what he said. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Alternating is what I do a lot of times. But yeah. I'm also, I also do what Sal says. Like sometimes when I'm trying to develop a weaker side and balance it out, I just use that as the opportunity to really challenge that weaker side. And then I just mirror it with the dominant side, knowing that I could do several more reps with that strong yep. arm. Yeah. It doesn't matter to me because I'm also utilizing this as a chance to yep. balance out my, my left or right. Yeah. The most common way that I do it is I'll do, uh, and it's just because for time for me is I'll do the unilateral exercise, a bilateral way. So if it's two dumbbells, you know, I'll do both dumbbells at the same time. Um, so lat pull down to dumbbell row. I'll do both dumbbells at the same time just to save time. But I mean, there's really no wrong answer here. Mm -hmm. um, and it is somewhat splitting hairs. Even if you did the same side all the time, there's so many other exercises and ways that you're training your body that you probably wouldn't notice. You wouldn't notice and a difference. It's also part of the challenge, right? Like, uh, you know, the superset part, you should feel a bit exhausted, like yeah. stacking those together. That's well, that's part of, that's part of our desired outcome of this, right? right? Like, so this is not, this part of the phase of the program is not let's get maximal strength, right? Mm -hmm. Out of an arm or both. It's like, we're also challenging, you yeah. know, hypertrophy here and then, and, and muscle endurance. Yeah. So, and that's getting accomplished no matter which one of those ways you draw it up. So by, drop by the weight down a little bit, you know, if you need to. Yeah. Let me, and then just to, just to add to this, Jared, if, if you were to look at a total year's worth of training, uh, and you're in maps aesthetic. So I'm assuming your goal is, is build muscle, right? You want to build muscle right. to build yeah. a, a, like a physique, right? Okay. So if you look at a whole year's worth of training, supersets are going to make up about one tenth of it anyway, period. Okay. So it shouldn't make up half of your workouts. It shouldn't even make up a third. It's probably going to make up more like a tenth of your workouts. And this is what you get. If you follow our programs is you'll, you'll notice if you look at the time spent doing supersets versus not doing supersets, it's something like one, you know, maybe one seventh to one tenth of the time uh, of your workout. So it's a very small part of all of your workouts. And then within those supersets, one sliver of that one tenth is bilateral, unilateral supersets. So even if you didn't alternate, even if you didn't do them at the same time, even if you didn't start with the weaker side, the potential, the fear that you have is, am I going to develop one side more than the other? It's not going to happen. So just to kind of put it in big picture, um, you know, in, in the big picture, I hope that helps. Yeah, it does. I mean, I think it's, you know, to your point, it was more of the endurance piece of it. You know, it wasn't that it was too heavy or too challenging. It's just, it was fatiguing so much yeah. quicker than by the time I got to my other arm, I could do a lot more. So mm -hmm. I think the alternating that I did worked really well, but I like the idea of, of maybe just doing unilateral on both of them. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's how I typically would do it. So yep. very cool. Can we, uh, uh, have you followed any other program or is this the first one? No, I have, I have several. My wife and I have gotten, gotten quite a few of them. We've been hooked on you guys for a little while. Oh, good. Rad. Do you have anabolic advanced yet? I do have anabolic advanced. I think the one that we were actually looking into, we haven't gotten yet was performance. Um, oh. something that we've been very interested in. Did you, did you, did yeah, you, let's get you I'm going to hold, is your wife going to watch this afterwards? Cause I'm gonna put you on the spot. She better. Okay. <laughs> I, I can give you mass performance or I could give your wa wife maps muscle mommy. If she doesn't have it. She has muscle. Ah, all right. Good for you. You're lucky. You have to make a choice. Good man. <laughs> we'll send you performance. Yep. Yeah. I'll send that over to you. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. yeah I appreciate got that guys. You, you got, got it, you. man. Appreciate the support. Yep. Awesome. Yeah, thanks, thanks so much for what you guys do. Appreciate Thank you. It. Take it easy, Jared. You know, I'm glad he asked that because, uh, we don't think about it, right? We write the program out to us. Yeah. It makes sense. Yeah. But I can see the logic. I'm kind of used to that. I can yeah. totally I, see the logic. I mean, we, I, I, in our defense, we do think about it when we're programming and no, it, what I mean and, is we don't think like, Oh, this is going to, well, cost. yeah, that yeah. it would cause, I mean, and yeah, actually I, I, we probably did, but I think that's exactly what you explained is the conclusion that we have. It's like, listen, uh, the difference is splitting hairs with, we, we don't yeah. need to overcomplicate this conversation. Let's right. just put it in there and then we'll address when, and whenever this when does a struggle. Yeah. When like it, when it comes up and, yeah. and what to do about it. And, you know, and, and a lot of this has to do with the the adaptation we're chasing in that phase. It's right. muscle endurance. It's hypertrophy. It's the pump is the main desired outcome. You're going to get that no matter how you draw this yeah. up. Uh, you we wouldn't we wouldn't convolute a uh, strength phase with something like this. It wouldn't make sense. Right. You're looking for maximal strength. Uh, the this, wrong way then. Yeah, this would be the wrong way to do that. But since the main ad adaptation is hypertrophy, muscle endurance, the pump. 
uh, totally okay and and not a big deal here. But good question. Uh, our next caller is Robert from Minnesota. What's up, Robert? What's up, man? How can we help you? Hey guys, uh, nice to meet you. Hey. Same. Yeah. So, um, I just want to say, like, you guys have completely changed the way I look at fitness, nutrition, and everything. I thought I had it figured out. I've been working out since I'm 13. I started listening to you guys a few years ago and completely blew my mind. So, like, thanks for that. Thanks for all the good info you guys put out. I recommend your podcast to pretty much everybody I talk to about this kind of stuff. So, it's really awesome. awesome. Thank you. Um, so, a little little background before I get my question. I'll make it kind of quick. Um, I started working out when I was 13. I'm 41 now. I got two kids, um, teenage son, young daughter. She's in gymnastics. He does baseball. They both are into working out, um, all that kind of stuff. So I guess what my question is, is recently I got into CrossFit in February. Um, and I thought I wouldn't like it, but then when I started doing it, I really liked the mobility aspect of it, doing the sauna and the cold plunge afterwards. Started bringing my son there. He loved it too. So then my daughter wanted to start coming. And, um, I guess it's kind of a two part question, um, with cold tub training after CrossFit, I know it causes vasoconstriction. So I'm just kind of worried about going between sauna, um, and then into the cold tub and back and forth after a workout like that, that's kind of intense. And then I'm also worried about, they don't do like a lot of isometric lifts in there. So I don't want to like do too much like cardio based lifts and lose any kind of muscle gains I'm doing in my home gym. So I'm trying to figure out what the best mix of working out is between the two, or if I should just do one or the other and just not do the CrossFit, or I, I just really don't know what to do with that. And then the second part of my question is basically like, how much can my kids do of, of that kind of like isometric training with me, CrossFit or any of that on top of sports? Like what, what do you guys think is the best approach for somebody in my age? Robert, I'm going to make some, I'm going to make some get some educated guesses right now on you. You tell me if I'm right or wrong. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. You are the kind of person that is all or nothing. And if you do something, you tend to go like all in, 100%. Is that you? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and the people around you would describe you. We, we know our kind. Yeah. And, you probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you probably have people telling you that you're doing too much right now. Does that ever happen to you where people are like, all right, you need to take a break? Yeah. Or just calm down. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess that cause, I, cause I, the way you're talking and I can see your black rifle t-shirt. Yeah. Like, okay. I know. Yeah. Right. Okay. I know what's going on here. Um, okay. So right. what's your goal? That, cause that's going to help me answer Cause the fact that you love it. That's great. The fact that you're bringing your kids and you're connecting with your kids. That's great. Move, that's great. Yeah, movement. My fear with your personality and the fact that you combined it with CrossFit and you're also doing cold and sauna afterwards is you're just going too much. You're going too hard, too much. And you're probably training at your capacity, which is not ideal for adaptation. So in other words, you have what you can tolerate, which is far above and beyond what is ideal for progress. Now, if you don't mind always redlining and you don't over go over the red line to where you mess up your testosterone or your sleep, you start having shitty sleep or it starts to break your body down and you don't really care about progressing too much. You're just like, I like to just push the limit then then that's okay but if so i gotta I got know what your goals are what do you want out of this sure so my goal is basically to i want to remain fit i want to have a decent amount of muscle mass so by the time i'm older it just continues i've been working out since i've been 13 so i want to maintain that um, i'm kind of a hard gainer so i've never had an issue with you know diet all that kind of stuff um, but I also i really like the mobility aspect i know if you stop lifting certain ways yeah. you won't be able to do that when you get older so i just want to you know, cover all my bases basically with all that. How know? many, how many days a week are you working out? Anywhere between three and five, okay. um, in the okay. home gym. And then right now I'm actually not doing CrossFit during my son's baseball season, mm -hmm. um, for a couple months and I'm planning on going back, but that's why I'm trying to figure this all out oh. ahead of time. So have it's you, a total of three to five days a week total. And are, uh, at, least, at least, yeah. I, are, have you followed, have you followed any of our programs yet? I have anabolic. I haven't started it yet though. Okay, so yeah, I felt I felt like that was the closest fit for what I was looking for. Possibly, but because you Maybe. you keep you keep referring to mobility and really enjoying I that, and I you may not know this. I don't know how long you've been listening to the show, but Maps Performance was written for CrossFit people. Yeah, we wrote okay. it, so we came out early on, on on the podcast and did a big podcast episode that went viral. But back in the days, it was why Mind Pump doesn't CrossFit. 
and we made the whole <laughs> case of like the things that we look like about it, the things that we don't like about it, and the things that we would hear from our clients. Like, I love the mobility sure. aspect. I like the performance that I get from it. I like the endurance and strength I get from CrossFit. They, so I said, okay. And our audience basically said to us, okay, if you guys don't like CrossFit, but I love all these attributes I get from CrossFit, how would you guys program something to give me those attributes? That's mass performance. That's literally, okay. we designed it with that that person in mind. And you sound like that to yeah. me. Everything you're saying with what you like and what you've gotten from CrossFit is what's in our MAPS performance program. So one, I'd like to give that to you so you have that because I think that- Jeez, Thanks, wow. Because I feel like that Thank fits uh, what's yeah. going on. Two, I have some micro adjustments or maybe some general goals or, or general thoughts around kind of what you're doing or training. I'm a big advocate for uh, cold plunging before a workout, uh, not okay. post-workout. Uh, I, yes, I know it, part of the reason why that is, I know it blunts the signal for recovery and potential muscle building from it. So I'm not a bit the biggest fan of doing it right after working out for those reasons, but even more because the adrenaline rush that I get. Catecholamine production. Oh explodes. man. Yeah. If you haven't tried it. Yeah. If you yeah. haven't done a cold plunge before a workout, you got to do it. It's the best pre-workout. Well, were you dry? Okay. Like, were you like drawn to that because you, th you thought it was like a wave to sort of recover a bit more effectively uh, from your super intense workouts because um in, in terms of like you're, you're drawn to the really intense workouts i'm gonna assume right yeah 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 and so i to, to yeah. his point like it's I, like i think uh i think you'd be surprised with mass performance like we're, we're addressing a lot of the like so crossfit has a lot of really good exercises in it like they're they're the, the problem for me is always it's been all mashed together uh and so you're you're kind of it, it kind of convolutes it in terms of like what the value you get from a lot of these exercises the mobility elements the endurance elements the strength elements if we can just compartmentalize that and just focus on that and specialize in those things exclusively you're yeah. going to get a lot more return for what you're putting in. So uh, even then, if you want to like do a phase of CrossFit and like get really good at like sort of the, the circuit, the endurance, you know, high intensity uh, element, but then move on and just focus on strength, your body is going to benefit, you know, so much better. Yeah. Robert, to be more specific, Olympic lifting to fatigue is terrible for Olympic lifting. Okay. Now, oh, for, okay. for, for yeah. because Olympic lifting, it's like plyometrics, right? It, it has to be explosive, and the technique is very important. Once fatigue sets in, form breaks down, and now it's just now you're just sweating, okay? And you've that taken an exercise yeah. that's safe, made it very dangerous. No Olympic lifter right. lifts Olympic lifts to fatigue. They just don't train that way. They don't max out uh, yeah. that often either. They even, in fact, that's more for competition. It, it like it's hard, but is it really beneficial? No. I think a lot of people don't ask yeah. that question. It, it makes you good at CrossFit competitions. Uh, now, right. now, I do know that CrossFit programming nowadays varies dramatically from gym to gym. It used to be shitty programming across the board, just to be honest with you. But now I know enough coaches and, and gyms to know that some actually have – they understand Olympic lifting uh, and they train it uh, as such, and they put the circuits together more appropriate, uh, more appropriately. Unless people are competing in CrossFit, in which case you have to do them um, all together. But yeah, I think I think if you enjoy it, do it. I would be very careful with just overtraining. Kind of listen to your body. I, there's no problem with the the cold plunge and the and the sauna back to back. In fact, that constrict and uh, vasodilate, so vasoconstrict, vasodilate, vasoconstrict, vasodilate, actually trains uh, your body's ability to to, um, acclimate. to to acclimate to both heat and cold. Yeah. It's actually pretty cool. Okay. Now, it is a bit of a stress on the body. It's not a bad stress, but if you're already pushing the limit, then adding that can actually tip you over into too much, just, just to keep that in mind. Okay. With your okay. kids, they're both pretty young. The thing yeah. I, the two things I would focus on with kids is uh, really, really good technique. Technique, 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 technique. Yeah, very good technique and then make it enjoyable. And this is a hard one for a lot of uh, fitness fanatics because what they tend to want to do with their kids is push them through a hard workout and make them tough. And no, 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 keep going. I don't, you don't want to do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there's value in that. But here's but you want to play the long game with little kids. You don't want to turn them off. That's right. So the long game with a 13-year-old is not can I get them fit in it, you know in five months? That's the short game. The long game is can I get them to have a good experience so that when they're twenty five yeah. and thirty five, you're planting seeds. They want to do this on their own. 
So even though yeah. the workout might look like nothing and then they enjoy it and they're like, I'm bored now. And like, oh, you can stop. And you're thinking to yourself like you did two sets, right? Like what the hell do you mean you stop? But right. you, you, the long game is I want my kid to develop a good relationship with, with this. So it's more important to me with little ki with younger kids when we're working out. Now, when I'm working with, with an adult, this is also important, but it's different. It's also very important as a trainer with adults. Mm -hmm. But with kids, my goal is I want them to like like doing this with dad. That's the most important thing. And then I want them to just like doing this. And then I want them to be interested in figuring out how to do this right. And then I want them to really like to work hard. But it's in that yeah. order. And some kids are gifted. Some kids will go in and they'll like the hard. And you'll get that one in, you know, in, in 30 that's like, dad, I want to push myself harder. And they're like, oh, shit. Okay, I got to. I got one of those kids, but most kids are not like that. Most kids will be like bored. They're distracted. good. Yeah. They're good for 15, 20 right. minutes. And then yeah. uh, I don't want to, you know, and you're like, Oh, that's cool. You don't have to do it anymore because you want to play that long game. That would be my only advice with that. But technique sure. is really important because they lack so much stability, especially as they start to grow quickly. If you get a teenager that's going through puberty, they're like, they're like baby giraffes. They're just like mm. so awkward with their <laughs> movement. So you want to, yeah. you want to really, you know, maximize their technique. My favorite program that we have for kids is map suspension. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Map suspension is a great way to introduce exercise, make it fun, challenge their st stability, form, technique, and range of motion. It's a great, and, and it's very easy to modify for every level. So this, you could have a kid who's seven and a kid that's 15 doing the same workout by simply modifying that exercise. And you can do it really easily from a suspension trainer. One of my favorite ways to train kids is that, and it's so awesome. good, so good for them to learn that stability component and at, their posture and their core that the, 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 uh, suspension trainer forces that on them and it's fun. It's just more fun to do than traditional weight training. So I love that as a way to get your kids introduced to exercise training and being consistent. That's my favorite thing. But for you, I think performance, I think you're going to love it. I think yeah. mass performance is literally the answer to the things that you like. And then, you know, back to my cold plunge point is yeah. I, I, you like cold plunging and you like sauna. I would I do. do it. Yeah. Yep. And if you feel like the itch for CrossFit again, you should try all time strength. That's, that's a hard program. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah that's a okay. Good one. Yeah. Anything hard really. I mean, and then, so you would do the suspend or not suspension, the performance first, and then I could still do anabolic though. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And then do you mind if I, uh, do you want to ask your hormone question that you, that you emailed us? Yeah. Or? Okay. Yeah. So, um, my testosterone level, I don't remember what it was at, but it went down to 421. Um, and, so my private physician recommended the pellet and I had a, a client of mine that went to her as well. Didn't like the pellet, went to injectables and liked the injectables better. So when I went back to her and asked her about the pellet, she said it's more bioavailable. So you don't actually get like the, the peaks and valleys, whereas he's saying the injectable one can control for the peaks and valleys more. And I just don't, I don't know if I should just try to fix my testosterone through like lifestyle changes first, revisit it. And then if I do, I don't know which one would be better for me because it's there's so much different data on okay, both sides. Okay, so you're 41. Do you mind if I go through your history that you that you asked us? Go ahead. Okay, so oh, ahead. so you also did you had a stint with anabolic steroids in your 20s, late 20s? Yep. 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 How long did you use them for? Uh, I did a cycle and a half, so like oh, a much. month and then a, or three months and then another month and a half. Oh, that's it. Oh, that's not long. Yeah, okay. so not long. Okay, the reason why I ask is because there's data showing that people who will dabble in anabolics on and off for a little while in their youth. The, the odds that they'll have low testosterone, let's say at their forties is actually quite high. So I don't think that <clears throat> impacted you. Could you raise sure. your testosterone? Um, yes, you probably could naturally. It's probably going to be down to sleep and recovery just based off of what you're telling me. Um, okay. you also listed your diet. It looks like your diet's really good. You know a lot about what you're eating. Um, it would really be about recovery uh, sleep and, and mitigating some of the, the all the activity because it sounds like you're doing a lot of good hard workouts, but they, the, that that can lower testosterone. One hundred percent. I mean, I I would ex I would explore that if you know that about yourself already. You're a caffeine guy. You're go get it guy. You're an adrenaline guy. You're a sauna cold plunge hard intense workout. Yeah. That could absolutely be. Te remember all those things, even though they're good for you, are all stresses on your body. And you put a lot of stress on your body and you add in the fact that we're 40 something years old now and you absolutely can start to drop oh, yeah. your oh, testosterone yeah. and simply 
giving your body the yeah. adequate rest, recovery, recovery. Yeah. and sleep that it needs, even though that might be mentally challenging for you because you like all the hard, uh, may ab absolutely benefit your free testosterone uh, by itself. Yeah. So I, yeah. I, I now, would explore that. Now, that being said, if you do that and it's still not where you want it, um, in my experience, uh, both personally and with the people I've worked with, injectable, yeah. all, just symptom wise is the best. I, I, I very rarely meet anybody that says, do you know, okay, so this is my experience with the people that I've worked with and all. The reason why people go to pellets and creams so is simply because they don't like to inject themselves, not because okay. it gives them better results. So I know what they say, sure. bioavailable, it keeps it more steady, blah, blah, blah. You talk to anybody who's done both and nine out of 10 times, it, they're like, I, oh yeah, I felt better on the injectable. Uh, so okay. yeah, good old injectable. The only pain in the butt is it's a pain in the butt, right? You're going to inject yeah, yourself. <laughs> yeah. 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 But I feel but, like I've heard you say something about this on a recent podcast as well. So I kind of thought that's what you're going to say. Yeah. 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 And some people can't even get it up that high with some of those other methods. Um, sure. and yeah, and the pellet can be uncomfortable for some people too or whatever, but, um, okay. yeah, symptom wise, just in my, I, I, don't, I don't, now that I think about it, the only people that I know who liked, who went off injectable were because they hated the injection. It's That's not it. because they got That's the only results. experience I have too. Yeah. Yeah. I've never had yeah. somebody I do that. I can deal with it. Yeah. You're, you're better off that way if you do. But definitely, let I, I would encourage you to at least, uh, you know, run a cycle of really scaling back on your intense training and really put a little more emphasis on recovery and sleep and and just see how your body, and I would add in their caffeine. I know we're joking about the whole black rifle thing, but I, we didn't even get into that because that could dramatically affect this too. Like if you are a hardcore caffeine junkie and you push that a lot uh, on top of everything you're doing, what's, trying what's, to scale back could help. What's your sleep look like? He said six and a half to eight and a half hours. That's it. Okay. And then what do you do for work? Are you, do you have a like stressful job? Not at all. I'm a tattoo artist. I love it. Oh, okay. okay. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I, I would, you know, so if you go to mphormones.com and talk to our people there, they can also do medical interventions that are not testosterone to help get your testosterone up, take you off and see if it sticks. And I've, okay. I, yeah, I've already seen a few people now message us that went that route where they went in clomiphene um, and then they went off and they, and it was, they were able to maintain a, a nice testosterone level. So that's another okay. option. Awesome. All right, man. We'll send you. Uh, we'll send you mass performance. I think that's the one, right? Yeah. I, I really appreciate that, and thanks for taking my call. It's been awesome meeting you guys. Thank you. You got it, brother. Right right Take it easy, man. All right, have a good one. Yeah, you too. Some, you know, you do this for so long. You can hear someone talk, and you're like, "I know what you do." You go really hard. <laughs> yeah, on yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. But um, I mean, great question. I think he knows what he wants to do. What you said about you know the stress, like like I I had a cl I had a guy whose testosterone was on the low end. Low end. We cut. All of the, he was doing all kinds of shit, running and all kinds of stuff. Cut all his running out. I had him lift twice a week. That's all he did. I bumped his red meat intake. Okay. He went from low to the top of the range. I'll never forget. Cause his doctor was like, what did you do? Yeah. And he's like, this, <laughs> I mean, the truth is this, and hopefully Robert will listen to this is that if he was my client, I actually would want to get him to maps 15. Mm -hmm. But I also recognize where he's at in his journey, he's what he loves to have. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So me taking him to performance and going like, follow that good programming and stick to that for a little bit. But then I honestly, the next thing I'd say is, hey, let's uh, let's try Mass 15 yeah. and let's see what happens. And I bet you that he would get as good or better results. I think his testosterone levels will naturally come up. Mm -hmm. I think he'll see improvement in his sleep. I think all around, he's going to feel better. And the extra time, if he has more time, I would say, let's put it in mobility. So it'd be a MAPS 15 protocol with what you're going to learn going through MAPS performance would be ultimate goal. So if I had you for six months, Robert, it would be MAPS performance right now, just so we can meet in the middle here and I can give you a little bit of what you want, show you what I know. And then you would go through that and then I would move you to MAPS 15. And then when you're, when you're going crazy, because I'm only asking you to exercise 20 minutes a day, I'd say, well, go ahead and take the mobility moves that you liked and we got from Maps Performance and slap that onto your day. And you could do mobility plus your Maps 15 and watch the response. Our next caller is Eric from Colorado. What's up, Eric? How can we help you? What's happening, buddy? Hi, guys. What's going on, man? Um, so first of all, huge fan of the show. Um, I like to... Jeez, uh, you guys got me nervous now. Uh, I've been <laughs> watching since I'm 18. Since I was 18, now I'm 21. Nice. I've learned a ton from you guys, aside from fitness, um, of course, mainly fitness, but so much more to learn from you guys. Um, 
but as I've like listened over the years, um, I guess over the past three years, I've kind of noticed that I think there might be like a bias or, um, I guess you guys just naturally, uh, go towards advice for people, I guess, um, in like late twenties, mid thirties, something. I would like to know what can I take from your guys' advice and maybe change it to fit someone who's in their early twenties. Like, what can I get away with? What can I push uh, more um, in terms of every aspect of uh, health? I want to set myself up uh, for the future uh, as best as I can. Oh, did you mean like so? We have like a bias towards like kind of older people yeah. because we're telling them because we're old guys because we're old guys. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, and so, so how would we change that for the twenty year old person? Is that, what, is that what you're saying, Eric? Yeah. <laughs> yes, please. I don't mean to call you guys old. I'm sorry, but uh, no. It, I, well, I, it's uh, you know, it's a it's a fair it's a fair question, and the, the truth is this: is the rules don't really change that much. The difference is that you can get away being more of a dumbass than you can when you're 40. So you can you can push the boundaries on it. But the 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 same rules still apply. I think that's the hardest part about being 20 is that you can actually do a lot of things the wrong way and still see decent results. But if you did it the right way or did it the way we're always trying to 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 teach, uh you would see even more results. But I guess that's the positive thing yeah. about being 20 is uh you can bounce you, back a little quicker yeah you could fuck up your sleep every night for five days in a row still go hit the gym and actually might build a little bit of muscle still or that shit ain't happening to me at 40 so you'll build way way more if yeah. you get good sleep that's right yeah. Yeah, that's it's, right it's the same it's the same exact rules and to be honest with you it sounds like we're communicating to the person who might be in their late 20s early 30s or even 40s but really we're just communicating to people who have the wisdom to listen to that kind of stuff like you so you you're young you listened when you were 18. We don't have a lot of 18 year old listeners in comparison, but I can tell already you're probably wiser than the yeah. average mature person your age, right? Like when you go out with your friends and stuff, you're probably thinking about and doing things that they aren't. Like I'm pretty sure they're not as consistent as you are in the gym, looking at nutrition the same, thinking about things the same way you are uh, because you're a little bit wiser, which is actually a really good thing. I'll say this. Here's some of the differences with someone who's young. Typically, the, the the conversations I have with younger people, besides what Adam said, which all the same stuff, the differences might be how to eat healthy on a budget. That tends to come into play because uh, younger people, especially if you're, you're going to eat out a lot in college, supporting yourself. All right, well, how do I eat healthy? How do I get enough protein? What does that look like? I tend to talk to them about sleep. I have to talk to young people about sleep way more than I need to talk about uh, sleep with older people because older people. It ends up hitting them in the face at some point anyway. Either they have kids or something happens and they're like, oh crap, I do need a lot. I need, do need more sleep. Um, now with younger people, it's basically like this. You you can get, a, it, it feels like you can get away with lack of sleep, but try stringing a month of good sleep together and then tell me how you feel. 30 days of scheduled sleep where you go to bed and wake up at the same time every day. The difference in your physical performance, the difference in your muscle building, your fat loss, your cognitive performance, your mood, night and day. Once you once you experience the night and day difference, then you know what you're missing. Whereas you might not know what you're missing because you never really maybe pieced that together uh, before. And then lastly, uh, it's to be patient. Uh, I, you know, I, I remember that age. It was like, you know, when I'm 18, 19, like I just, I can't wait to be jacked. And people with older lifters would say, well, yeah, you got to work out for five more years, dude. And I'm like, five years? Like, that's forever. Like, yeah. like I'll just train harder well, now. Yeah. Can I do it in 60 <laughs> days? Like, are there some like supplements I could take that'll make it happen faster? And it's like, it's a slower process. Like you don't become a master um, of this overnight. But if you're patient now, bro, I'm going to tell you right now, as you get older, you're you're probably already set aside from the average person your age anyway because you work out. You're, cause I can see you have certifications yeah. as a trainer. Let me tell you something right now. You're 21. Do you, If you stay on this, do you know how different you're going to be from your peers at 31? Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. They're going to be like a different species. 41, forget about it. They're all going to be broken and they can't get erections and you're going to be feeling like amazing <laughs> and yeah, you'd be on well, fire. So, And I think too, another sort of factor to this whole thing uh, you know, obviously what they both said in terms of like trying to, you know, maximize all those potentials with, with recovery <laughs> is also too, you're in a 
good position now because you can recover and rebound uh, and you're young is to really stretch the boundaries right now. And so I saw that up on here that you uh, are pursuing powerlifting. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. And, and in terms of you really like maximal output, uh, but obviously in a responsible programmed uh, way, uh, I think right now risk reward isn't quite as uh, crucial in terms of like, you know, how I would guide somebody that's a little bit older uh, in terms of like, you know, some exercises that might be, you know, a little bit on the high risk side, I would probably have them avoid versus you. I think you're in a, in a great spot to really experiment and stretch, you know, the boundaries and the capabilities uh, that you currently have right now and find where that line is, maximize it, and then sort of come back and find that homeostasis uh, so you, you know, you know how to really recover from that high intensity. I love, uh, a powerlifting cycle or p training to do. Oh my God. It's so free. valuable for a it's, teenager. And the reason oh, why, okay, it's somewhere in 20s. What, when these guys were talking, one of the things I thought that we could give to you that would be valuable is like, okay, what were the biggest mistakes I think I made in my twenties in my lifting career? And if I could go back again, how, how would I tell my 20 year old self? Like, these are the things, I mean, I, I was fucking up a lot, but what were the big ones? Right. And one of the things I didn't understand was the difference between tolerable and optimal, right? Mm -hmm. Like it, 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 I was full of piss and vinegar. I had drive. I was just like willing to do whatever it took to get that be big and jacked. But what I could tolerate and what was optimal for my body were so far apart from each other. And so I always had the attitude of more is better. And that it's so not true when, when, and powerlifting forces you to learn that. That's what's so great. Yeah, you either if, get stronger or you don't. Yeah. And so if you follow like our powerlifting program or you get a coach who's a powerlifting coach and you go to do a meet and you have to train for that, you learn that through that process. Like you, one of the, I think one of the most glaring or things that I that blew my mind when I, when I started to get into like powerlifting training and understanding the way it was programmed was like, oh my God, these guys never trained a failure and we're only doing a few exercises. And it's like, I could do so much more. I'll add a, like that was my thought process. And when you realize that, like, oh, this there's a big difference between what's optimal for my body to get the most out of it versus what my body can tolerate and handle because I'm young, full of piss and vinegar, and I have all this drive and discipline. It's like that unlocked so much more gains for me. And if I could go back and like slap twenty year old me around and like get that across to me, I think I would have made huge strides especially on. and i think it would have been valuable too adam because uh if i put you if i said to you let's do powerlifting and then you competed in it it would have made you look at it and yes. say i'll do this yes, yes. yeah you i would have, have to be objective oh yeah. totally so eric you said something in the beginning too you said you learn a lot from us about fitness but a lot about other things so i'm gonna are you so you seem to be pretty growth minded in other words you're you're, you're trying to improve your health and fitness but it sounds like you just want to be a better man is that yep. okay well, look, 100%. I'm going to tell you, there's a couple things that plague men your age these days, two of them. One of them is uh, spending too much time in front of a, a, a screen, whether it be social media or video games. That's a, that's a, tends to be a problem with young men. And pornography, that's a big problem with young men. So if you want to just move in the pro-growth place, avoid those things and watch what happens to your drive because those are both creative drives that are largely wasted on uh, you know conquest through video games and uh, you know sexual drive through release on you know processed sex. Especially is, if you can replace that time with something that's truly productive. Oh, you you will trust get, me. You won't getting, be able to sit still. <laughs> right. If you getting get, a certi that's getting gonna a, go somewhere. <laughs> getting a certification, <laughs> learning a skill, reading a book, yeah, listening dude. to it. If you can take whatever said time was that you were spending in those in those arenas and flip it into those things, look out. Oh I yeah. Mean, look out where you'll be in five years from now. Yep. Hundred percent. Well, sounds good, guys. Uh, thank you. Um, would we happen to have time for um, uh, another question? Yeah, let's or, do it. Go ahead. I feel like I kind of rushed into things, so my bad about that, guys. I didn't really give myself like a right. proper introduction or ask you guys how you were doing. Um, <laughs> sorry. No, all good. <laughs> I didn't want to make this uh, too long. Um, but are you guys doing good uh, at yep. the moment? You guys, we're good. Busy? We're good. What you What yeah. you got? No, for no, us? No, we're, yeah, we're doing. We're here just so we can answer your question. Don't worry. Um, I would say the only hurdle I've had to deal with continuously with lifting would be my uh, scapular strength. I started doing cross country and track in high school and I kind of started lifting after the fact. So around 17 years old 
is when I started to take um, strength training and resistance training a lot more seriously. And then since then, I've done two cycles of powerlifting from you guys' powerlifting program. Um, great results. I should have added that in probably before um, I started asking questions. And then right now I'm on map symmetry just because I did notice some imbalances. Um, so I wanted to make sure I tackled those before I went maybe to a performance uh, style program for the summer or um, anything bodybuilding related. But I guess what I really want to know is what are some, what are like the big rocks in terms of scapular health? I think my posture um, working a blue collar job is kind of just, it doesn't help that I have to not have to, but I, I work that uh, industry. And then on top of that, I think being a runner, I've always had a weak upper back. So um, what would you guys suggest? What would you guys do uh, if I was your client and I had just really um, weaker upper back muscles in comparison to, I would guess, like I'd say the lats or the leg muscles. So Eric is, so you said scapular. So are you doing, is there winging going on or is it just, just the strength of the upper back? I would say maybe a little bit of winging happens. Um, my posture isn't horrible. Um, and then I would say I don't have, um, like horrible strength. I'm not super, super weak as I've tried to tackle it over and over again, but I would say like maybe the connection isn't there. I've had knots. I remember like at 18, I think I got knots in my upper, um, or lower neck area. And then in between where my, in between my scapula, where my rhomboid is at, Yeah, I think the rhomboids. So I've had knots there and I'm pretty sure I still have them to this day, even though I went to a chiropractor. Um, I'm just not sure how I can do a better job at it. You know, I'll send you. Okay. So let's send you prime pro unless you have that. And in prime, I do have that. <laughs> you do. Oh bro. Easy. So listen, go in there, okay. do the, uh, upper back scapular shoulder mobility movements, practice those several times a day alongside your workout. You're, you're following a great workout. Symmetry is great for that. Yep. Um, and mass performance is great for that as well. The key, which you've probably heard us say about mobility drills or corrective exercise drills, and this is good because I know you have CES and you obviously want to probably teach other people, is it, intensity is not more important than frequency. Like frequency is everything. Like you are you far better off so like, let's say you go through Prime Pro and you and you see that there's like five different exercises for you to do for scapula stuff, right? Or upper back strength. Instead of you trying to do all five exercises yeah. and you inconsistently doing that, I'd like be like, let's pick one yeah. of the those one. and do it all, all as many times a day, every day that you possibly can. And, and then now that you've got that consistent, okay, let's add a second one of those. And like, so getting you to frequently be working on that because you're trying to correct a poor recruitment pattern uh, frequency is so important over like you just going, Oh, yeah, I'm going to dedicate teach it how to respond. Right. I'm not going to, I'm going to dedicate today as my mobility day. And you spend an hour doing mobility drills, but then you don't do it again for the rest of the week. Uh, that is way inferior compared to you. You just doing it, you know, every, every, you know, hour or two a day frequently. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, that helps a lot. I think I would take maybe one or two days a week to do some mobility and, I will say lately I've been lacking on my stretching. I think ever since this latest powerlifting cycle, I haven't been stretching as much. Um, so I think that needs to be a priority right now. Yeah. No, practice the mobility stuff in Prime Pro yep. for the areas that you want to target. Practice them several times a day for about five to ten minutes each. Okay. And then, Eric, did you go through our free training for the trainers? Um, I No, I did not. I think I might have attended the first call, but I think – when you guys had the second or if you guys had a second and third call, I wasn't able to attend those. Yeah, there so. was three. there's a recording so you can rewatch. I'll have Doug send you the link so you have it. You can watch them anytime. What I know I know the part that Sal talks is boring, but I, it's uh, I get there. You, you get me on the <laughs> second day. Mindpumpfitnesscoaching.com. The good stuff uh, oh, comes on the days, second day. Mindpumptrainercourse.com. Mindpumptrainercourse.com. Thanks, Doug. Yeah, we got you. Yeah. Thanks, Eric. Yeah, of course. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, keep it up, brother. Yeah, keep up the good work, man. Bye, guys. Thank you. So I want for people who are watching this right now, who uh, that so when I figured out how to hire people based off of their character, that Eric would be somebody I'd hire. Yeah, yeah. He's got the right attitude, uh, and I could tell he'll do good at whatever he's doing. But great attitude around all of this and the way he's asking questions and and how he's tackling them. But yeah, for you know what he's saying for younger people, it's like same stuff. It's the yeah. same stuff that we say to people who are older. The difference is, just like you said, Adam, their youth tends to 
um, high yeah, mask a yeah. lot of things. Yeah. Oh yeah, you yeah. know, no, the same same rules apply, and and just as important, it's just that you're lucky when you're. I'll, I'll give you guys. Here's the best example I have. Uh, I don't remember what year it was in high school, but I had been working out since I was 14, so it's before high school, working out, working out, working out. There was a summer. I want to think. I think it was the year before I became a junior. I want to say, where I finally lifted properly, like for strength, deadlift, squat, bench press. I wasn't overtraining like before. And I finally started eating appropriately, started hitting protein. And I gained over that summer like 15 pounds yeah, yeah. a month. Yeah, yeah, I, I was like, boom, boom. It, it was just my happened. junior scene. Was that you? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Awesome. Look, if you love the show, head over to mindpumpfree.com. We have a guide, a free guide there that teaches you how to lose fat in some easy steps. Go check it out. You can also find all of us on social media. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump to Stefano, and Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. <laughs> 